Uh, hey, bro, want to see my sword? <laughs> All right. Whoa. Oh, whoa, whoa. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact, and it's totally a science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> Today we're diving back into r slash mm, neckbeard stories, I guess we'll call it. It actually comes from my personal subreddit, r slash redxreads, and this series looks to be mostly complete, so I am quite excited for that. Diving on into another series and knowing that it will be finished in a timely manner. Oh, you gotta love that, right? <laughs> So today we're jumping into the story of Velvita Beard by user Frat Goth, which is a pretty sick username, honestly. <laughs> I do appreciate you guys being here. Check out that Ramtide GoFundMe down in the description if you haven't yet. If you can't donate, that's fine. I just want to let you know that it exists, all right? So let's go ahead. We'll get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive directly into some of this r slash neckbeard stories. A cringe. The Saga of Velvita Beard. The Beardery begins. And oh, look at that. They're using the Neckbeard Saga tags and everything. God, this subreddit is just growing up all the time. It's getting better and better. You should come on by if you haven't yet. R slash Red X Reads. Thanks so much. Check out my podcast. Teespring is also a thing, right? Is that enough plugs? We just can't cram enough of them in. God damn it. Let's... <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this thing. Hello, readers and Red X. Hello, use a frat goth. <laughs> I've been a fan for a while, and I'm excited to upload my own beard saga. Welcome to a tale of beardery, the likes of which you may have seen. <laughs> I was about to say, I I've definitely seen almost everything, but uh, you called me out on that. Unfortunately, I do this every day, digging through the muck. And I love it. <laughs> Deep down, I do love it. I knew this beard for about two years, and I have some stories about all the creepy shit that he did. These may not be the most riveting stories, but they are horrible. Horrible equals riveting. Haven't you heard? <laughs> uh, it might get a little bit heavy. You know, some people might dip out, but there's also a, a subsection that really wants the horrible stuff. And I'm trying to service all the subsections. Just doing the best that I can, all right? You know what else is really riveting and helps me to service subsections of the community is the fact that I'm live streaming this on Twitch right now. So uh, if you want to see me live read some videos, come on through. That would be pretty cool. Now let's push on into the story. <laughs> <laughs> There's just too many plugs to get through these days, and that's a beautiful thing, honestly. So, as much ridiculous bullshit goes down in this saga, I promise you that all of these things actually happened. I I'm telling you, dude, my suspension of disbelief is pretty strong these days. <laughs> Unless the OP starts going off on how cool they are, humble bragging on Reddit, that's usually when I come after OPs. Tell them that their story's either fake or that <laughs> whatever. Talking all that good trash. But as long as you stay humble, you write a good story, I I'll take the ride with you. I can only explain the huge amount of weirdos in this one small town as such. We had three things that bring socially awkward weirdos together into one place. A liberal arts college, an art college, and the best rehab centers in 300 miles. Liberal arts college and art college... Are they different? I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you got a lot of liberal arts at an art college, right? <laughs> Maybe not as much art at the liberal arts college. <laughs> but yeah, I I'll let it slide. <laughs> we were also like an hour drive from a well-known big city. The small town was also cheap to live in, but also not super boring. Bling bling boom! Weirdos everywhere. Cat girls everywhere. No, not cat girls, just weirdos. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. Although if there were like feral cat girls, you better believe the neckbeards would show up right behind them. So let's be grateful for that. 
at least. We got into our character list. Oh, snap. We've got Velveeta Beard, <laughs> the beard of the story, named so because his diet consisted mainly of those boxed Velveeta macaroni and cheese dinners. Oh my god, I had mac and cheese the other night, cooked from scratch, wifey, mwah, chef's kiss, beautiful, loved it. Eating it from a box, I mean, I guess if it's all you want to eat, you do you, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna judge somebody for their shitty diet. <laughs> I judge people for their personality. Even though you would think this would make someone obese, Velveeta Beard was rather skinny probably due to his wild nervous energy and his habit of speed walking everywhere that he went. A mane of long blonde hair with an orangish short beard adorned this beard's head. Was it orangish because he ate the box macaroni and cheese all the time? <laughs> his beard is just smeared with, with cheese crust, congealed, so all he has to do is lick around his lips to get a little snack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Despite having had braces, he had a strangely horse-like mouth with overlapping front teeth. Hey, I got a bit of an overbite too. Let's not go off too hard on that, okay? <laughs> God damn. Braces ain't gonna fix an overbite? Or maybe they should. I'm not sure, I never had braces. Maybe that's why I have an overbite. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, Soy Beard is Velveeta Beard's friend. Has some beardy qualities, but not as much of a beard as Velveeta Beard. This guy looked weirdly accurate, like the Soy Boy meme while acting like the hippest hipster. Update! I didn't know what looking that up would get you, and I apologize for that. This is the look that I'm referring to. Yeah, that's Soy Jack, but with a... Uh, it's, it's the vaccine soy jack or something like that. <laughs> okay, cool. I guess anybody can look like that if they make that face. It's sort of a generic face for a reason, is it not? <laughs> he thought he was smarter than everyone and literally told me that he was. He took photos that were technically really good, according to him, but they were extremely boring to look at. Think of like a black and white photo of a field in winter or a picture of a random item in some stranger's parked car. <laughs> uh, they both seem like weird dudes, honestly, but I don't know if I have enough to judge them on quite yet. I don't exactly hate them as people quite yet. You gotta make me hate them, OP. That's what all this is about. Then I can really start going ham. Also seems strange to me that Soybeard got like way more of a description than Velveeta Beard did. Or maybe it's just because it's broken up into paragraphs like that. Whatever. We also got big titty goth girlfriend. Oh snap, of course she's here. <laughs> she's everywhere you look. She's everywhere you go. Just like Jesus. Big titty goth girlfriend is in all of our hearts. <laughs> uh a friend of both Velveeta and Soybeard from college. Was she really a friend though? <laughs> I'm sure they wanted her as a friend, but did she recognize them as friends? God, this is gonna be terrifying, isn't it? She was indeed a big titty goth girl who I would eventually start dating and the eventual lady of Velveeta Beard's desire. She has some nerdy hobbies like Magic the Gathering, which attracted, and still attracts, the advances of many a beard. Oh yeah, you know that uh, girl that you idolize on the internet? I'm dating her right now, check this shit out. Pa pow, pa pow. <laughs> okay, cool, I guess. <laughs> he doesn't say a goddamn thing about her personality or anything except that she plays Magic. Which makes me think that the relationship might be slightly shallow, but I ain't here to judge, honestly. And we've got Party Demon! Whoa! <laughs> uh, what a terrible name to give yourself, OP. Here we go! It's starting! <laughs> this is me, OP! Pretty tall guy with a floppy mohawk. And a floppy dick. No, it doesn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of look like a create-your-own-character Skyrim elf. 
Ugh, Falmer? Jesus, miss me. <laughs> At the time, I was what 4chan would describe as a degenerate. My hobbies included drinking, doing drugs, making drugs, bar fights, hooking up with strangers, working out, and watching the Shrek movies. Oh, P. God damn it. <laughs> it's gonna be one of those posts, isn't it? He's like, I'm the coolest guy. Check me out. I'm hooking up with everybody. Oh my God, I made some drugs. Now I'm gonna do them. <laughs> Also, I work out and watch the Shrek movies. Wow, you're such a quirky fucking guy, aren't you? Whoo! I don't mean to go balls to the wall on OP, but so far, most hateable character in the story. <laughs> I worked as a bouncer on the weekends, which was a strangely depressing job, and I was teaching myself to code when I wasn't fucked up or working. Yeah, because he was just messed up so much, bro, and apparently that's cool. <laughs> it's not cool. Get your life together. Sort your shit out. I don't like any of this, man. You know what's happening right now? Beard versus beard. But stop. Wait. Let them fight. <laughs> Maybe they will destroy one another. As soon as dude said party demon, I basically knew what this was going to be. Fucking edgelord bullshit, humble bragging post. But okay, okay, we're in it now. If there's a whole saga of this, I gotta screenshot the whole thing because OP's probably gonna delete it as soon as he realizes that I'm not coming after the beard. <laughs> It might all turn around though. It might turn out like the Stratbeard saga where the first post I despise OP and then I flip it around in the following post because I realize that they're they're just a person too. A person that is trying way too fucking hard. <laughs> uh, but all right, <laughs> uh, that's cool. You're not like the other guys, OP. <laughs> we'll ride it out, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Velveeta Beard. Episode one, how I met the beard. You were born into the beard. <laughs> the end. Uh, should I come after OP this hard? I don't know. The comments might come after me in turn and be like, no, nah, dude, he's just an edgy teenager. Leave him alone, Red X. Yeah. Honestly, that doesn't usually happen with like male OPs. Female OPs, <laughs> people will go to bat for them every time. Male OPs, I bash them and people are like, yeah, he probably deserved it. Fuck him. <laughs> There's a, a bit of a divide there that I've noticed. Anyways, this was back in 2014. And the details are hazy because I did so many drugs. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, oh, God damn it. Not all of the dialogue is word for word, but it's accurate in terms of what was said. Yeah, I trust you, OP, 100%. Reliable narrator right here. <laughs> uh, I had just broken up with my long-term, emotionally abusive girlfriend, and I was a sad boy. Was she the one that was emotionally abusive? Let's be honest here. Could you tell me that story so I can dig through it and suss the truth out of it? <laughs> because I will, if you tell me the story. So, I did what any degenerate would do in this situation, and went into drinking and doing drugs, which is really easy when you work at a bar. I guess that's one way to deal with it. The one drug that I could never find, though, was that fine pine. Come on. What? <laughs> you tripping, bro. You tripping. <laughs> Marijuana is the rarest drug around here? I don't think so, bro. <laughs> this stuff is easy to find if you know who to ask. You probably look like a narco, P. <laughs> That's why nobody wants to sell to you. They're like, yeah, Floppy Mohawk, he's a police officer. I'm a police officer. <laughs> I don't know why, but it was rare in the college town that I lived in. I could get acid and cocaine quite easily, but weed was expensive, and not many people sold it. 
Yeah, you definitely want to risk like a, a felony over selling one tab of acid than you would a misdemeanor over selling like 10 grams of weed, right? <laughs> Uh, uh, you're right, my suspension of disbelief is, is slipping away from me already. As I asked around for months, I was eventually introduced to a drug dealer that sold only that big dank 420. Oh my god, that's the drug number. That's how you know he's cool. He knows what the drug number is. <laughs> uh, you try it so hard and I'm just not buying it. <laughs> Uh, OP is not only a beard in disguise, he's a liar! <laughs> I think. To my surprise, she was the big titty goth girl. Yeah, and I totally banged her out eventually. Ho ho! Such a ladies man. Let's do some drugs, me and you. I don't know where to buy drugs, but... <laughs> if you could point me in the right direction... I hope that I'm not the only one that is getting... Like, really big, <laughs> that happened vibes here. Come on, man. Already, I'm, I'm ready to jump off the train. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Thanks for the story, but I'm pretty sure every inch of it is bullshit. Uh, so our friendship started out as awkward small talk when I would buy weed from her. And eventually, we became friendly acquaintances. One night, during the week, when we both had off... She invited me to meet her and her friends at a relaxed outdoor bar for a drink, and being unable to resist both goth girls and the juice of the barley, I of course accepted. Hell yeah, I do beers, bro. <laughs> uh, stop trying so hard. <laughs> uh, my spine is already powdered. We haven't even met the beard yet, and I want to die. <laughs> Smoke beers every day. <laughs> Smoke weed every day. Uh, so yes, OP accepts, and... Uh, when I arrived at the bar, I quickly got a drink and sent her a text telling her what table I was at. Why did you not go to the bar that you work at and get some, like, free- never mind. <laughs> this is when I first met the beard. Oh. Little to my knowledge, big titty goth girlfriend's friends <laughs> were Velveeta beard and soy beard. Beta orbiters is what they call them. And now you're another one of them, OP. Now she has three beta orbiters. Soon she'll have the whole set. Collect all five. <laughs> like a wave of wiggly wild power metal forced into the body of a 27 year old Velveeta soaked man, Velveeta Beard emerged with Soy Beard and Big Titty Goth Girlfriend in tow. So that's the reason you don't like Velveeta Beard, right? <laughs> you, you just see him as like competition. You're like, I know how I can sabotage him. I'll just write a Reddit post about him. Got it. <laughs> okay. It's not working. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to be party to this. Now, readers, I'm not one to dismiss someone based on their appearance. And big titty goth girlfriend was pretty nice to me so far. So I decided to ignore the warning signs going off in my head and give both Velveeta Beard and Soy Beard a chance. Why were warning signs going off in your head? Honestly, warning signs were probably going off in all three of their heads, right? And they were just as non-descriptive. <laughs> I was very uncomfortable around these people for a reason that I can't describe. Okay, <laughs> great. Uh, while Soybeard reeked of smug hipness, Velveeta Beard was actually pretty friendly. He regaled me with tales of his favorite anime, and I think he even bought me a drink at one point. And I was like, maybe he just looks and acts real strangely, but he's a nice person. I mean, Big Titty Goth Girlfriend is friends with him. However, I was wrong. So it seems like the dude is nice, pretty sociable, buying drinks, all that stuff. I would let my guard down at this point too. One might even believe that he's a normal dude and it's OP that is uh, possibly the beard. <laughs> All this remains to be seen, but I will say out the gate, 
I'm wanting to defend Velveeta Beard. I don't give a shit about Soy Beard. <laughs> okay, he's a Soy Jack hipster. Whatever. But, yeah, Velveeta Beard seems pretty cool. So far, at least. So, readers, this is where I must explain my name. What? Frat Goth or, or Party Demon? Because they're both dumb as shit. <laughs> I take back everything that I ever said. Once you started talking, I'm like, I don't like your name anymore. <laughs> uh, I have the strange ability to make people around me feel okay about getting really fucked up. Yeah, that's why he's the party demon, bro. He's like, hey, bro, let's get thrashed, bro. It's totally cool, bro. Bro, bro. <laughs> It's totally not gay, bro. I just sucked your dick, bro. It's not like we're even making out, bro. <laughs> I sucked your dick. Ew. Uh, yeah, is that right? <laughs> is that how that goes? Maybe it's that I don't judge him for doing it. Maybe it's that I'm also usually getting really messed up. Maybe it's that I'm some sort of party demon inhabiting a sad boy's body. Oh, oh. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> the beard hasn't uttered a word and I am dying. Oh, God damn it. Never, never call yourself a demon, okay? <laughs> that is the quickest way to get the edgelord train rolling. <laughs> No! <laughs> I don't ever push drinks on people. And I even have a few friends that don't drink. But regardless, people usually get pretty drunk when they drink with me. Oh yeah, it's totally me that's doing it too. It's not like alcohol or anything. Like if they were drinking by themselves, this shit totally wouldn't happen. <laughs> Maybe you've just surrounded yourself with alcoholics. <laughs> Didn't you say there's a rehab center in your town? <laughs> so this is what happened to our crew on this fateful night. And soon it was suggested that we leave the bar and go back to Big Titty Goth Girlfriend's house to smoke some weed. Oh yeah, totally edgy. It's our crew now, even though this is the first night that you've ever met these people. All of a sudden, you're part of the crew? Seems a bit presumptuous, does it not? <laughs> uh, you didn't even ask to be in the crew. You're not in the crew! <laughs> we felt bad for you. We were really awkward around you. That's why we got super drunk. That's why we felt the need to smoke some weed and fucking loosen up. <laughs> we thought maybe that you'd stop being weird, but it just made it more weird. I can tell even from a post on Reddit <laughs> that OP is a weird dude. It might be that Velveeta Beard will unveil himself to be a beard as well, but at the moment, OP is definitely showing his beard cards a hell of a lot more. Anyways, upon entering the house, Big Titty Goth Girlfriend asked Velveeta Beard and Soy Beard if they all want to share weed for a bong. <laughs> she excludes OP. Ha! Huh, you're not part of the crew, like I said. <laughs> uh, uh, Soybeard pulls out a little bag, and Velveeta Beard exclaims in excitement, Yeah! I just gotta get mine! Readers, this is when I realized something terrible. The Beard was Big Titty Goth Girlfriend's roommate. Gasp! Oh my god! Why, why, why is that terrible? <laughs> You might want to explain that part before you say it's terrible. Who cares? It was a living situation in which the beard and another roommate, a girl who never left her room except for work, lived on the third floor, and Big Titty Goth Girlfriend lived on the second. We all went to the chill out room on the second floor and began the 420 blazing, bro! Oh yeah, super cool, edgy shit! As we became thoroughly blazed, Velveeta Beard turns to me saying, Hey bro! <laughs> Wanna see my sword? <laughs> Alright. Whoa. Oh, whoa, whoa. The first sentence that he's uttered. Okay. Now we're seeing a bit more beardery. Maybe you guys will end up being best friends. <laughs> 
being a nerdy guy in the I fucking love D&D sort of way, I of course wanted to see a sword. So I followed Velveeta Beard up the narrow staircase to his lair. The glint of sharp steel in my mind and the smell began to encroach on my nostrils. It was like a mixture of sweat and weed and Velveeta that somebody had slept on for weeks without ever changing the sheets. And Velveeta that somebody had slept on for weeks. What you talking about? Like, <laughs> that's what we call in the bed? Just a block of Velveeta cheese? <laughs> uh, I don't know what's going on. <sighs> As he opened the door, the smell, surprisingly, didn't explode out, but it lingered like a miasma over the whole area. I mean, the weed smell, that ain't too bad. But yeah, you probably want to get rid of that sweaty smell. Although if he's like a, a relatively young bachelor, I get it. My whole house smelled like shit when I was younger too. <laughs> I've been pretty open about my light beardiness earlier in life. So I get it, you know, who do I got to impress? I'm high all the time, I don't care enough. <laughs> totally been there before. Again, going to bat for Velveeta Beard. I give him a pass on it, that's fine. What I saw was a nest of wild proportions. A small room contained a bed, desk, computer, and hundreds of unopened Gundam figurine boxes cascading out of his closet, somewhat held in by his headboard. <laughs> Two actually built Gundam models were on his desk with bowls of dried up Velveeta based meals and of course the computer. I mean, Gundam models, that's pretty legit. It's better than Funko Pops. Let's be clear about that right now. <laughs> and he only built two of them, which doesn't bode well, but obviously he's got some good money coming in if he's able to buy this many fucking Gundams. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's keeping the boxes unopened so that he could sell them at a later date or something like that. This is like an investment of sorts. Probably one of the worst investments, <laughs> one that I would never make, but it ain't my money. You do you, bro. And maybe it's working out after all, if he does have like so many that he filled up his freaking closet. That's thousands of dollars in Gundam figurines, okay? <laughs> Velbeater Beard says, you could sit on the bed. I just gotta get under it, OP. Look, OP's actually calling himself Party Demon. Oh God! Ah! <laughs> you typed it out multiple times. Oh God! Oh! <laughs> I can't, dude. Uh, uh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> that's OP's voice. That—that's you. That's what you sound like. <laughs> <laughs> I sit on a cleaner looking part of the bed as Velveeta Beard scrabbles around under it, moving around random boxes next to my legs and pulls out yet another box. Does it not feel awkward to sit on the bed while somebody's digging under it? I think I would stand and wait for him to get out from under the bed, right? That's what a normal person would do, right? <laughs> That's the hole that I'm going with in this story. No, there's so many holes in this story. I am I am so <laughs> far removed from what's going on right now. How can I actually care? I can't is the answer. So uh, he pulls out this box and he opens it, revealing one of those Roman stainless steel replica swords and hands it to me. Velveeta Beard, <laughs> pretty cool, right? OP trying to touch anything in the room as little as possible. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> uh, you asked to see his sword. He showed you his sword. I showed you my sword, please respond. <laughs> uh, and then you're gonna complain. You know OP is gonna go off and be like, it wasn't even a real sword. It was just a replica sword. Totally lame, but I told him it was sweet. Ha ha, I pulled one over on him. <laughs> I'm surprised that you both didn't pull your dicks out and start like a literal sword fight. So I give him back the sword and Velveeta Beard scrabbles it back under the bed in its home of boxes. Then he pulls out a small pipe. 
Velveeta Beard. Uh, dude, you want to smoke some more? I was not about to pass up even more free weed, regardless of how gross the room was. This was a mistake. LP, you were a mistake. You're in here grubbing on fucking people's free weed. You're like, yeah, take advantage of everything. His generosity in his own home. And then you make a Reddit post talking shit about the dude. Ah, uh, such a bad look. Such a fucking bad look. I can't even. But OP says, oh, yeah, man, <laughs> let's get fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Give me all of your free things. I'm gonna go talk trash about you later. Despicable. Despicable. Now, the thing about Velveeta Beard was that he was outwardly very nice. His neck beard tendencies were hidden away, secreted in his attempts to appear as a good guy and win the heart of his target, Milady. Oh, wait, are are you the targeted Milady, OP? <laughs> <laughs> if that's the case, then why is he being nice to you? He should see you as a competitor if he really had nice guy tendencies, tell you to fuck off and get out of his house. But no, he's buying you drinks, he's sharing his stash with you, and, and you still want to treat him like crap. His neckbeard tendencies are on the inside. I haven't seen him. Where? The fact that he showed you his sword? What the fuck is this, dude? The only beard tendencies I've seen so far are completely on OP. I think everybody can agree with me on that. So I genuinely did like Velveeta Beard for a while, aside from his grossness. We smoked a bit, and my eyes followed the pipe to Velveeta Beard's mouth, only to see something that I wish I hadn't. Uh, yes, it's difficult to share a pipe with somebody, no matter how fucked up you get. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to think about it too much, all right? <coughs> Velveeta Beard had a sort of white crust around his mouth that I would later come to know was a constant thing that Big Titty Goth Girlfriend would yell at him about. Perhaps it was that I was 15 drinks and a few bong rips in. Perhaps the room we were in wasn't as well lit as his apparent Gundam storage containing a bed, but I had somehow never noticed this all night long. The horror of realizing that my mouth had touched whatever Velveeta and spit-based horror was now on the pipe was only broken by the door being thrust open and Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and Soybeard bursting in. This is the judgment? Oh, his lips was crusty. Okay, maybe he's dehydrated. You guys are drunk as shit, you know? <laughs> it does happen. <laughs> <laughs> this seems like such a reach. It's like, yeah, he's totally gross. His room smelled bad and it had Gundams and his mouth had white stuff on it. Okay. <laughs> if you guys are getting a bit of that cotton mouth, don't you get that like thick white spittle? That disgusting shit, especially if you're talking. I don't know. I think you're looking too deep into it. Like I said, I'm still going to bat for Velveeta Beard. I don't give a fuck about OP at this point. Just a user, a bad person through and through. Big Titty Goth Girlfriend says, Why are you guys smoking up here? Did you see Velveeta Beard's sword? <laughs> what did you think? Oh, you know Big Titty Goth Girlfriend seen his sword a couple times before, right? Right? In the same room, right? That's why OP's so mad at Velveeta Beard, honestly. <laughs> uh, I think I figured it out. OP? It was pretty cool. Uh, I fucking love swords. Yeah. <laughs> Can't believe he's still calling himself Party Demon. I want to die, bro. <laughs> Every time I see it, my spine powders itself a little bit more. Oh, Velveeta Beard. Uh, we were just hanging out. Do you guys want to hit? Big Titty Goth Girlfriend takes the pipe and inspects it. She says, Velveeta Beard, clean your mouth. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it is pretty gross. And now all that is in OP's mouth, but I don't feel bad for OP. <laughs> He's just a little bit, you know, dehydrated, disconnected from his body. Especially if you're drunk and high, bro. <laughs> you're not going to be thinking about like, are my lips crusty? They feel a little crusty. You're going to be like, ah, ah. oh God. <laughs> uh, 
I'm never gonna dance again the way I dance with you. <laughs> uh. With the nervous energy of a power metal solo in a song about unicorns, Velveeta Beard wipes the horror off of his mouth as Big Titty Goth Girlfriend attempts to clean the pipe. Heh, cling the pipe. These pipes are clean. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> I think she's cleaned his pipe a couple of times before. Again, that's why OP's so salty. Saltier than Velveeta Mac and Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Soybeard rambles on about something. I don't actually remember a lot of what this guy said in terms of actual words because he was fucking boring and pretentious. <laughs> it was always something about his photography or math rock or some hipster band in an attempt to seem cooler than everybody in the room. Yeah, we covered that in Nice Guys the other day. Using music to make yourself seem cooler? Sad. <laughs> Don't bother. Everybody has different tastes, and your taste isn't any better than anybody else's. It's all a matter of opinion, isn't it? I definitely hate boring, pretentious people. On paper, I would probably like to hang out with OP more because he doesn't seem as boring or pretentious, but then having read the post, I know that despite being the party demon, he's so far up his own ass that I would hang out with Soybeard. <laughs> Me and Velveeta Beard can be bros. Soybeard, I guess you can come along. Whatever. Let's just get high and play some Super Smash Brothers, bro. <laughs> we don't have to get like completely destroyed or anything. Let's remain functional and have a good time. How about that? So we all smoke a bit more, and I decide that it's time that I should probably go home, as it's 4 a.m. Yeah, you've taken enough free stuff. Now get the fuck out of their house. <laughs> get out of here, man. Shit, I'm saying. Uh, Soybeard and I leave together and exchange goodbyes, and I walk home. Yeah, great. Okay. Well, that's the tale of how I first met Velveeta Beard. Nothing too beardy happened, but it did get rather gross. I think your attitude was the grossest thing, OP. <laughs> oh, hey, let me post the beard story where nothing neck beardy happens. Awesome, great. I'm glad we've all wasted our fucking time. <laughs> you could have made the post longer, right? You're not at the character limit, right? I do thank you for the post, but goddamn, I'm supremely disappointed if I'm honest. Uh, yeah, more cringe will ensue in the further episodes as I begin to witness the way that Velveeta Beard acts around the m'ladies. You mean like m'ladies besides Big Titty Goth Girlfriend, right? Because around her, he seems to be like a decent dude. It seems to me that this post didn't go any way like OP thought it would go. I bet he thought we'd all be like, whoa, he's so cool. He works as a bouncer and does drugs. Wow, I, I aspire to be like that. Maybe when I was 15. <laughs> but as a 30 year old man, I, I look back and I'm like, God damn, that is sad. Biggest bruh moments in history. <laughs> Uh, I am looking forward to Velveeta Beard Part 2. We are going to continue on and see if anything beardy happens at all. OP might pull the post down, but that's okay because I am going to save every single one of them right now. <laughs> uh, ain't no way you can stop the cringe train, baby. I do hope that, you know, it turns into more of a mutual train wreck instead of OP just getting out there and showing his whole ass, but... We'll have to see how it goes. <laughs> to me, Velveeta Beard seems like a pretty balanced and generous dude. OP is the user who thinks he's too cool for school. That's why he doesn't like the hipster beard guy, because he's like, you're not the cool one, I am. Guess what? None of you are fucking cool. How about that? <laughs> Y'all just think that you're cool, because you don't know what cool is yet. Ugh. She, she likes me. She's just being weird about it. <laughs> she, she want me. She want me. 
She want me. You know, it doesn't say this on that disclaimers thing, but um, <laughs> I also do podcast stuff, and I also got a Teespring, and yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I'm working on out here, trying to expand the brand, as it were, and uh, thank you guys all so much for encouraging me. As always, this is the saga of Velveeta Beard, episode two, Velveeta takes me to a dinner party. If you'll remember in the last post, link in the description, uh, we dunked on OP pretty hard. I didn't see a whole lot of beardery coming from Velveeta, whereas it felt to me like OP was just trying to make moves on the big titty goth girl, and <laughs> and he was like jealous that Velveeta Beard was her roommate or something like that. It's a really weird dynamic going on here. I guess we'll see if it gets any better in this episode. This is one that I'm not live streaming on Twitch because I just got home from the hospital, so <laughs> those will resume in tomorrow's episode. Also, that Twitch link in the description. God, there's so many plugs. All right. <laughs> so, hello, and welcome to the second installment of Velveeta Beard. Yeah, thank you, Frat Goth, for writing it out. Happy to be here, etc., etc. In this story, I accompany Velveeta Beard to a small dinner party type of deal, hosted by a lady that he wanted to woo. So he's not interested in the goth girl? Then why are you so jealous about the relationship that they seem to have? They seem like roommates. <laughs> uh, this dude just wants the throw heat on the beard for no reason at all. So yes, indeed, the maladying ensues. God, I hope so. <laughs> we didn't get much of that in the last episode. It was just me uh, coming after OP. So we'll see how it goes this time. We got our cast list about the same as normal. Velveeta Beard, Party Demon, whoa, that's our OP. Pie Girl is a girl that Velveeta Beard knew from college and had a weird obsession with at the time of this story. Pie Girl? <laughs> was she like a 10 out of 10 cutie pie? Whoa! She was a lady that he was attempting to woo, which meant constantly going to events that she was having and doing what I can only describe as talking at her. <laughs> at least he's making an attempt, I guess. She was an amazing baker and made some wildly good pie. Oh, how about that hair pie between the legs, right? High fives. Okay, never mind. <laughs> the Pickler. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, what a name. Imagine the Pickler is like a Batman villain. I would love it. <laughs> this is a guy that Pie Girl was into at the time of the story and Velveeta Beard's rival in this story. Oh, no. I thought the party demon was going to be the rival the whole way through, but no, we got multiple villains, just like in Batman. <laughs> it was actually really nice, and had the hair of a Greek statue, flowing in glorious curls. I mean, why don't you blow him, bro? <laughs> uh, sounds like you're pretty into him, too. I'm just saying. I find out after Velveeta Beard was removed from all of our lives that the pickler makes great pickles. Probably also had a great pickle, you know what I'm saying? Pie Girl was into it. She's like, hey, bring that pickle over here, right? Whoa! <laughs> uh, I still miss those pickles after moving out of the college town that we lived in. No, I'm all about a good pickle. Sweet pickle, uh, not the greatest, but yeah, give me a nice, a nice sour pickle with some crunch to it. I'm all about it. I also had like these German pickles that were really herby and disgusting. That's my pickle tier list. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for listening. <laughs> uh, edit. I also wanted to add a better explanation of my character in these tales. And this is an edit that was prompted by my treatment of OP in the last video. We talked about it. He kind of acknowledged how his past self came off. And honestly, if I was sitting here writing a, a similar story about my past self, it probably would be almost equally as cringe. Maybe. <laughs> the bar's set pretty high, but uh, I don't know. Once I do finally tell my story, I guess we'll have to compare and contrast. Of course, I'll never be as hard on myself. <laughs> That's just human nature. Anyways, uh, OP admits, I'm a pretty big source of cringe here. I was a ridiculous, edgy guy at the time, 
dealing with your emotions slash dissatisfaction with life by being drunk or on drugs constantly isn't great. But that is what I was doing at the time. And it's how I was back when the story was taking place. So I wanted to present myself accurately as to how I was back then. I was quick to start fights and do other stupid things at the time, as you will see in the following stories. Okay, it's fine to do those things. Not really fine to do those things, but <laughs> it can be acceptable if there's uh, some regret that comes with it. You're like, hey, let me preface this. But in the first story, it definitely came off as like, you know, some self-aggrandizing, like, look how cool I am for doing all the drugs, you know, and that's really not the way to be. <laughs> There was a point in my life where I partook in some substances, but I don't think that I would talk about it now like, whoa, hey, this is a great substitution for a personality. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Again, I am coming at you a little bit hard, but at least you are trying to wind it back at this point. So I do appreciate it. You know, I, I give you some kudos for that. This story happens a few months after I had first met Velveeta Beard. At this point, Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and I had been hanging out pretty frequently and had just started dating. Oh snap! Velveeta Beard doesn't feel like any way about this. He's just like, yeah, that's great. You got a boyfriend. Hooray! <laughs> and OP's still being like overprotective and weird about it. I mean, I'm just theorizing here. <laughs> I'm desperate to get even a, a crumb of beardery from this supposed beard. Uh, we'll have to see. Because of this, I was around Velveeta Beard a lot, to the point that we had become friends. It is good. As I said in the last story, he was really outwardly a nice person, or so I thought. He was just really gross and somewhat strange looking. Okay, but gross and strange looking are not what really qualifies a neckbeard. It's all about the ugliness on the inside. I can deal with somebody who's gross and strange looking as long as they're a good person through and through. It seems that there's some subtext here that points to Velveeta Beard not being a good person through and through, but, uh, show, don't tell, you know? <laughs> Prove to me that he's not a good person, please. Before we continue, there's also something that you should know about past me. If we're friends and you hate someone, I'll hate him too. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not a good look either, man. That's called following the crowd, and I am so not about it. If somebody's like, I, I don't like that guy, I'm like, well, I respect your decision not to like him, but I have no reason not to like him, so deal with it. <laughs> if it means that much to you, we don't have to be friends anymore, and then no more conflict, right? Uh, I was once telling one of my best friends that I hated this one guy, and before I got into the various reasons why I hated him, my best friend forever said, uh, cool, I'll hate him too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, this is kind of the most brain dead outlook that I could conceive of. But sure, you know, pick your friends or whatever. It was such a nice gesture that I decided to start doing that as well. My views on this have changed since the events of this story. Well, I'm glad to hear that last part, because that is so not the take to have. I don't really hate anybody. The most you'll get from me is, like, passing disinterest. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. But to hate somebody on principle? God, that must take so much energy. <laughs> You're just like, you don't like them? I guess I have to not like them, too. Come on, man. The reason that they're fighting is probably dumb as hell as it is when most people get into arguments and start to quote-unquote hate each other. It's not worth the energy expenditure, as I've found. Anyways, glad you changed on that, but now we are on to the story. So, I was hanging out with Big Titty Goth Girlfriend at her house when Velveeta Beard returned from his shift at the local sandwich shop. It's not a Subway, it's a Jersey Mike's local sandwich shop. Mom and Pop shop, they still have those? <laughs> Gen X has basically obliterated the appeal of mom and pop shops. I'll blame the boomers for a lot of stuff, but <laughs> Gen X and millennials also had a hand in some things. Rise of Walmart and Amazon culture, etc. But that is such a tangent for another day. 
<laughs> he greeted me during my light afternoon drinking session and said that uh, he was going to a dinner party thrown by a girl that he knew from college. Oh, he wants you to wingman him in there, right? All right. Let me get a little more drunk and we'll be on the way. I promise not to embarrass you. Maybe. Although I am the party demon, bro, so everybody's gonna be drunk when I show up. Whoa! <laughs> uh, Velveeta Beard said, uh, uh, Hey, bro, I'm going to this thing tonight. A big titty goth girlfriend has to work, so do you want to come with me? Oh, he doesn't want to go by himself. That's kind of nice, isn't it? Also shows, like, a real lack of self-confidence, but... Eh, I went through that phase, too, in my life, I suppose. Although, if you go to a party where you don't know anybody, you will meet somebody, you know? <laughs> Just throw yourself in the pool and, and learn to swim. It's gonna be fine, probably. OP just says, Yeah, I'm down. What is it? Will there be drinks? <laughs> Uh, oh, you lush, you. Velvet a beard. It's a dinner party or some shit. I don't know. But the one girl that's into me is hosting it. And she invited some fucking douchey guy. I gotta do something about it. Yeah, you do, bro. Let's roll out. Go and beat this dude up at <laughs> the dinner party that he was invited to. Sounds like a sound plan. <laughs> Uh, here we go with the nice guy vibes. All right, Velveeta Beard, I'm seeing it just a little bit. OP says, uh, what's douchey about him? Velveeta Beard, I don't know. He just is. He, he's just so... Uh, <laughs> uh, OP says, lol, uh, okay, I'll hate him too. <laughs> Damn it, dude! Uh, this is so ridiculous. You can't even give me one reason. Give me one good reason! Then he's all, Oh, he, he likes the girl that I like. And I'm like, no. I said a good reason. <laughs> uh, you being a jealous little baby man is not a good reason. But Velveeta Beard says, uh, Good. Uh, because I need you to be a dick to him. Well, I remind Pie Girl that she likes me. She needs reminding. <laughs> uh, well, there's your problem. Uh, we even made out once. Uh, also, we have to bring our own drinks. But there will be pies. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you lied about there being drinks? Or I guess he just dodged that question. Poor pie girl. She probably made out with Velveeta Beard one time, got a little bit too drunk, stuck her tongue in his cheesy mouth, and was just like, I'm never drinking again. <laughs> you were her rock bottom, Velveeta Beard. How does that feel? <laughs> OP just says, uh, Four locos it is then. Oh, four locos? <laughs> I want to drink like a high school girl. Whoa! <laughs> Two shots of vodka. Uh, stop it. Stop it! <laughs> but all right, you like what you like. That's fine. So I texted Big Titty Goth Girlfriend later to ask what the deal was with this girl and Velveeta Beard, as I could not imagine anyone actually wanting to kiss those Velveeta encrusted lips. <laughs> she said that ever since Velveeta Beard had allegedly made out with Pie Girl once, he had become obsessed with trying to hook up with her. Oh, so we don't even confirm that it actually happened. All right. That makes a lot more sense, I suppose. You don't gotta lie to kick it, Velveeta Beard, all right? <laughs> Uh, it's not normal to behave this way. Why are you doing this? Anyways, fast forward to around 9 p.m. and we arrive at the party. Four locos in hand. Oh, yeah. We're gonna get turnt tonight and shit our brains out tomorrow. Because that's how four locos work, if I remember correctly. <laughs> I am fully zooted. <laughs>
<laughs> Zoom it, really? Did you have cocaine on hand? Because I'm pretty sure that's what that means. <laughs> Otherwise, you're using it incorrectly. And I was fully prepared to be a dick to a stranger for no other reason than I was Velveeta Beard's friend. Oh boy. Oh wow. It's wild. <laughs> I guess we'll have to see how it goes. How can you trash talk somebody that you quite clearly have a man crush on, OP? <laughs> I still felt strange about Velveeta Beard attempting to get with this girl who seemingly wasn't even interested in him, but I didn't realize how much of a nice guy he was at that time. Oh yeah, the cracks are starting to show. The first sentence about this dude where he couldn't articulate even one negative point about him Despite him being a douche. Yeah, I got you pegged already. Then again, not everybody's a neckbeard scientist, you know? Sometimes we let one of the red flags pass us by. We're like, well, it's just one red flag. Nah. <laughs> it's time to dip. One red flag means GTFO. I just thought that he had, like, beardy hygiene. So, Velveeta Beard and I entered the party, and it was not what I expected. <laughs> It was neither a dinner or a party. It was just a few kids that Pie Girl knew from college sitting on the ground or in a few of the seats and eating pie. <laughs> uh, is this a lucid dream or something? What the fuck is happening right now? Why are you all sitting on the floor eating pie? <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know what's going on. I think I would be really tripped out walking into a scene like this. Then Pie Girl walks over to us. Pie Girl. Hey guys. OP. Hey, I'm Velveeta Beard's friend. <laughs> nice to meet you. Velveeta Beard, somewhat dejectedly. Oh, hey. Bro, you shot yourself in the foot right out the gate. Come on, man. You want this chick to like you? Where's your fucking self-confidence? You, you should have amped yourself up in the car. Had a few drinks, pre-gamed it, if that's what it takes. <laughs> but she's not looking for some beta male. <laughs> you got alpha it up, dude. Anyways, Pie Girl says, Come over to the pie station. <laughs> I made a bunch of different flavors. OP, fuck yeah, I love pies. This is great. <laughs> I hope you're just being kind, because this sounds like the worst party that anyone has ever experienced. Are the pies that good that they saved the whole party? I guess it remains to be seen. <laughs> uh, dear readers, I love pie almost as much as I loved swords, drugs, and drinking. <laughs> Uh, that is some strong cringe. You had to throw swords in there, bro. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, oh, just take a break. <laughs> Go sit in the corner. <laughs> Uh, you need a real quick timeout, and then we can continue this dumpster fire. <laughs> so yeah, I made a beeline for that kitchen counter. <laughs> uh, where five pies were positioned, and I took a piece of two of them. Did you cut it with your sword? <laughs> uh, stand back, m'lady. Let me cut these pies for you. Unsheathed katana. Nothing personal, pie. Shing, shing. <laughs> uh, oh, I am so endlessly entertained by that. <laughs> I'll never forget. <laughs> they were some great pies, and I was having the time of my life. Man, that's... <laughs> God. <laughs> All it takes is, you know, a couple people eating pies on the floor. This is the time of my life. <laughs> uh, was there good music playing? 
were there free drugs being passed around? <laughs> How do we kick this up a notch? <laughs> Uh, oh god. Velveeta Beard, however, was sulking in the corner, staring at a curly-haired, friendly-looking guy who was also eating these delicious pies. It's not the only pie he's gonna be eating, right? <laughs> I think that's the pickle guy. Velveeta Beard comes over to me, still staring this guy down. Velveeta Beard points him out to me and says, That's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, about the most pathetic move that you can make. I brought my friend, now go bully him for me. <laughs> Why don't you grow a dick and bully him yourself? How about that? <laughs> OP says, the guy eating that slice of pie alone? Velveeta Beard. Yeah, he's not even talking to anyone. Why is he just sitting alone? What a douche. I, I think he was also in a frat, too. Yeah, you think. I know Velveeta Beard has done endless research on him. If there's one thing I know about Beards, is that they good at Google, alright? He has scrubbed this guy's Facebook timeline, looking for any sort of weakness that he might exploit. And despite all of that, he still needs his friend to come in and save him. <laughs> Oh, uh, you don't want to fight your own battles, baby boy. Okay, it's fine. Sending your friend, baby boy. OP just says, uh, okay. I'll go talk to him. Velveeta. Good. You distract him. <laughs> I'm going to go talk to Pie Girl. She, she likes me. She's just being weird about it. <laughs> she, she want me. She want me. She want me. Yeah, she's the one that's being weird about it. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ, dude. Everybody's sitting on the floor eating pie. Nobody talking to anybody else. I swear to God, this is a lucid dream. This can't be real life, okay? This shit going deep. Too deep. <laughs> I casually walked over and sat next to this guy, who I couldn't really figure out what was douchey about him. And I introduced myself. This is the Pickler. <laughs> the Chad that was attempting to steal Pie Girl away. Readers, I was fully prepared to be wildly mean to the Pickler, thinking that he must be secretly douchey, but he was just so pleasant and chill that I physically could not do it. Well, it's good that you backed out on the plan, OP, because... I mean, this guy, this much Chad energy, I think he would fucking body you and Velveeta Beard at the same time. <laughs> There's no use in fighting it. OP says, ooh, ooh, oh, hey, I'm OP. The Pickler. Nice to meet you, man. How do you know Pie Girl? OP. I just met her. I'm actually friends with Velveeta Beard. The Pickler. Oh, that guy? pointing at Velveeta, who's now following Pie Girl around, talking at her. <laughs> I bet he thinks he's being so stealthy. This is like a top secret mission. He's like, yeah, go distract that dude. I'm gonna swoop his chick. Well, <laughs> it's not easy to swoop his chick when she's not interested in you at all. That's really how you see yourself, Velveeta? Mr. Steal Your Girl? <laughs> I know it's how OP sees himself. <laughs> but I expected better from you, Velveeta. OP says, Um, yeah? So, who are all these other people? The Pickler. I don't know anyone here. Just Pie Girl. <laughs> OP. Me either, actually. Do you want my other four loco? <laughs> Aw, look at this. A blossoming bromance. And maybe something more? Ooh woo? <laughs> uh, the pickler says no thanks i don't like getting too drunk oh my god serious chad energy he ain't got shit to prove to nobody he's just here eating some pie enjoying himself. the party demon powers have failed miserably on this dude who uh doesn't succumb to any sort of peer pressure <laughs> he's like no i'm good dude y you can go ahead and drink that 
in some sad attempt to make your existence more bearable. I'm gonna be over here doing me. God, so much respect for that dude. It was at this point that I confirmed what I suspected after talking to big titty goth girlfriends. The pickler was totally normal. And Velveeta hated him because Pie Girl seemed to be into him. I mean, you can't stop the train, dude. <laughs> People gotta do what they gotta do. Velveeta just thinks that by talking at her enough, eventually she'll swerve. Nah. <laughs> Never gonna happen. The longer I knew Velveeta, I came to learn that he did this type of thing pretty routinely. He would lie about his intentions, or someone else's actions, or personality in an attempt to make him seem like a great guy, and have everyone else seem like they were the ones that were making life shitty for him. Yeah, we are participating in some mental gymnastics now. Now the beardery is really sinking in, is it not? And on top of all that, what a loser! <laughs> Can't even fight his old battles? You can disarm him of his only weapon by simply uh, not supporting his shenanigans. He's like, do you want to go to this party? I'm like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> oh no, now how am I going to talk to Pie Girl? Pie Girl doesn't even know what I did for her. I saved her. <laughs> He's not even man enough to go fight his own battles. He wants to try these snaky little weasel shenanigans and... Fuck that, dude. <laughs> Grow some balls. Only then will you find some respect. And who knows? Eventually, you might even start to respect yourself. Enough to brush your crusty, gross teeth. <laughs> uh, I don't remember it exactly, partially due to the Four loco and partially due to only hearing snippets of the conversation, but this is what I think Velveeta Beard's wooing was like. Velveeta Beard? Hey, pie girl! Who's that guy? Pie Girl? That's the Pickler. He's pretty cool. We've been hanging out recently. Oh yeah? Did you tickle his pickle, right? <laughs> Did you let him dip it in your special sauce? <laughs> Velveeta Beard? Hey, why would you invite him if he's just gonna sit in the corner? I mean, that was exactly your plan. If OP hadn't gone along with this shenanigan, right? Did, did Velveeta Beard actually get invited? That's another thing that I have to wonder about. Why would Pie Girl invite him in the first place? Pie Girl, I've been talking to him and it looks like your friend's getting along with him pretty well. Velveeta Beard, <laughs> Party Demon gets along with everyone. He's probably too drunk to realize what that guy is doing. Party Demon gets along with everyone. You're using the Beard's own words to amp yourself up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Party Demon's the coolest guy I've ever met. My god, he can drink me under the table and his dick is dinosauric. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and actually, Pie Girl is gonna hook up a Party Demon at the end of it all, right? Actually, she totally didn't do that because <laughs> I had a girlfriend at the time, but I totally could have beat if I wanted to. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I'm just taking it completely off the rails. Pie Girl says, What is the pickler doing exactly? Velveeta Beard? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we really need to hang out more. <laughs> I could come over this week. <laughs> uh, yeah, great, you're in there. <laughs> what a fucking non sequitur. What's he doing? Oh, I don't know. We should hang out. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, are you even living on the same planet as the rest of us? Jesus. Pie Girl surprisingly doesn't shoot him down, at least not outright. She just says, ha ha, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Uh, just brutalize him. Put this poor fuck out of his misery, would you, pie girl? <laughs> Tell him he's stinky and gross and you don't want anything to do with him. Give him a reality check that makes him rethink his life, okay? You're not doing him any favors by playing along. Of course, beards are also known to get weird and violent when things like that happen, but you're also in a room full of friends who would probably go to bat for you, so... 
Uh, I don't think there will be a better time than now. Do it. Eviscerate him. But yeah, she didn't. She won't. <laughs> Velveeta Beard just says, he's probably not even into art, you know? He was in a frat, right? Uh, I've been working on some sketches that I could bring over and show you. <laughs> Uh, this is so disjointed and weird, and I'm not sure if it's the way that OP wrote it, since he's filling in gaps or some such, but I like to think that this is verbatim, exactly what Velveeta Beard said. That kicks up the funniness factor like a hundred times. <laughs> just jump from thought train to thought train, nothing in between, just <laughs> a chain of non sequiturs. Great job! <laughs> uh, side note, Pie Girl, Big Titty Goth Girlfriend, Velveeta Beard, and Soy Beard all went to the same art college. And yeah, dude is out here gatekeeping art. Everything that you look at is art, okay? <laughs> if you want to look at it that way. The music you listen to, wow, that's art. The layout of your computer case, wow, that's art. The wallpaper background that you've chosen for your desktop. Wow, that is also art. Art is part of the human experience. There's no way that you can just not be into art. They don't make no sense. <laughs> but I don't expect Velvita to Beard to get it. Pagro tries to make her escape and just says, Uh, yeah, cool. <laughs> I have to go check on the other guests. <laughs> I have to be anywhere but here. The remainder of the night was the pickler and I eating pie in relative silence while watching Velveeta Beard try his hardest to get a lady to realize the error of her ways and choose a nice guy like him. <laughs> uh, oh my god. That does have to be entertaining. That would make it the night of my life. People watching is like one of my favorite pastimes ever since I was a teenager. Back then, I used to think that I was cooler than everybody else that I was watching. Now I realize that we just all look like idiots, so <laughs> that's fine, I guess. I can accept that. The travesty of her courting a douchebag who calmly eats pie and doesn't drink the sacred juice of the loco was just too much for him. After that pie party... <laughs> Velveeta Beard went over to Pie Girl's parties a few more times in attempts to seduce her, but I decided it would be best if I spent those nights not watching him talk at a milady. And that is the right move to make. All right, OP, a little bit of redemption for you in this part of the saga, and I'm happy to see it. There was still the bit about the swords, I'm not gonna forget, but <laughs> at least we are getting some beardery now, so maybe it's all shifting. Maybe it's gonna take that strat beard trajectory where I really come at the OP in the first couple of parts, and then I realize that, yeah, they're just a person, and the person that they're dealing with is a lot more insufferable than this person could ever hope to be. So yes, let's direct our vitriol where it belongs. Anyway, uh, Pie Girl and the Pickler did eventually start dating, which ends Velveeta Beard's conquest for that particular milady, or attempted conquest, I guess would be more accurate. They are a cute couple that I still know, and they're still making amazing pies and pickles. Oh, you should make like a pickled meat pie. How about that? Combine both your efforts. High five. <laughs> I found out later from Pie Girl that Velveeta Beard never actually made out with her. <laughs> uh, God, that is rich. Oh, why would you lie about that? You could just ask the other person really easily. <laughs> Uh, you thought that I would just never talk to her? What are you talking about, dude? Ain't it just like a neckbeard to like think that they're smarter than everybody, but to actually be more stupid than basically everybody that they interact with? <laughs> uh, classic trait, and I love it. Never change. Please, thank you. <laughs> this was just another lie to get people on Velveeta Beard's side about the ladies rejecting him. I mean, even her refusing to kiss you would also 
get people on your side, like that's proof that she rejected you more than her kissing you and then rejecting you, isn't it? I don't know. I'm not I'm not trying to follow beard logic, all right? <laughs> there is none. I always wondered if he thought putting the blame on the miladies was an attempt to get his friends to pressure them into dating him or him just trying to cover up his creepiness. Probably both. You would think that it was the latter, but he always brought his friends around these girls after trash-talking them. <laughs> I think he just trash-talks everybody. I think his own mind trash-talks him a whole heck of a lot, and he never questions it, which is probably a lot to do with his problem. That's why he doesn't take care of himself. He doesn't feel like he's worth it. So how could he possibly feel like anybody around him is worth it, you know? A little bit of pop psychology for you there. Whatever. I still have no idea why he did any of this, but I guess I will never know the true ways of this beard. The beardery is beginning to ramp up, but it's not at dangerous levels yet. But I promise, readers, the end of the tale of Velveeta Beard has a finish that burns the life of the beard to the ground in a flaming explosion of creepiness, blackmail, and revenge. God, the explosive endings are just my favorite. Hopefully we can really learn to hate Velveeta Beard before that all goes down. We don't have that many parts in this saga, but I'm looking forward to learning more about him. I mean, him and OP, basically both a couple of cringy individuals, but at least OP isn't out there harassing the miladies, at least as far as we know. <laughs> I'd like to hear how Big Titty Goth Girlfriend got ensnared. But hopefully it was just a mutual thing, and she's like, okay, I guess I'll date you, roommate's friend. My fingers are crossed that it wasn't too try-hardy, but given the contents of the post, it might have been. <laughs> but he would be uh, hard-pressed to be as try-hardy as Velveeta Beard. Good God! How does he keep getting into these parties is what I really want to know. You'd think after a couple of these encounters, Pygra would just be like, you know what? Please don't show up. I'm going to have people remove you if you show up. <laughs> and that could cut down all these awkward encounters uh, quite quickly. You would be shocked. And once he bragged that he went to a restaurant and farted up a storm. <laughs> uh, these numbers do not, do not oh, add up. Who did this to us? God damn it, I'm here on business! Velveeta Beard Part 3! Velveeta fingers an unconscious girl. Oh god, we're just coming out of the gate. Even in the title, he, he just come out and, and he just said it. He, he, he didn't even try to tuck it in there or anything. Christ! Okay, I guess we're in for a pretty heavy one today. And he also somehow attracts a lady. I don't believe that. She got self-esteem issues or, or something going on there. <laughs> was she actually a milady or was she a leg beard? Did you bang a leg beard, bro? <laughs> Speaking of which, yeah, check out the Teespring. I didn't plug that yet. Oh, we got that bang a leg beard, bro t-shirt. Oh my gosh, so beautiful. Pick that up if you'd be so kind. So yeah, Velveeta beard, definitely bang the leg beard. <laughs> no question about that. No no proper milady would, would go along with this. Oh, God, are we ready for this today? All right. Trigger warning. <laughs> Rape and sexual assault. Eh, kind of same thing, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Hello, edge lords and edge miladies. <laughs> and also uh, our, our non-edgy readers. I mean, if you've stuck around on the channel this far, you, you probably got like some slight edge to you. I'm going to put that out there right now. Welcome to a new episode of Velveeta Beard! I'm so excited to be here, hey. <laughs> In this episode, you will see how Velveeta Beard was somehow once worse than he was when I knew him. I also drunkenly throw a bunch of money around at the sandwich shop Velveeta Beard worked at, trying to buy some sandwiches. Are you- are you flexing about buying sandwich? You stop it, OP. You stop it, I'm trying to give you a chance, all right? <laughs> I bought so many sandwiches, bro. Whoa! 
<laughs> yeah, we get it. You're a big, big fucking man. <laughs> Put your wallet back in your pocket and shut the hell up. Tell us about the beard, would ya? <laughs> all right, all right. Take a breath. <laughs> Coming in a little hot already. All right, all right, okay. It's gonna be fine. I'm realizing that these are more of this is why you shouldn't be drunk or on drugs 90% of the time. Whoa, because I'm drunk or on drugs 90% of the time. Whoa. <laughs> That's not even physically possible. You sleep for eight hours a day. The most you could do is like 66% of the time, right? <laughs> I'm not trying to logic this one out. Also, Velveeta Beard does creepy things stories rather than like traditional beard stories. I mean, just give me the, the beard part. We don't have to flex them. I, I threw so much money around in that sandwich shop and I did drugs. Wow, bro, you're so cool. You are still just the coolest ever in life. We've had many OPs, but none cooler than Party Demon. Whoa! He even gets his own voice. That's how much I enjoy his character. <laughs> like I said, we got our previous episodes down in the description as per usual. Let's do the cast list, I guess. We've got Velveeta Beard, the beard of our story. You know him already. We got Soy Beard. He's Velveeta Beard's friend. Yes, indeed. He's like kind of a hipster beard in a way. Big titty goth girlfriend. Basically, just uh, everybody's object of desire for some reason. OP has given her no personality out of outside of being like, hey, nerdy gamer girl. Not like other girls. Although today he adds into the description that she worked at the local crystal slash bead slash jewelry shop before I met her and has a ridiculous knowledge of gems and minerals. Jesus Christ, Marie, they're minerals. <laughs> they're rocks, Hank. No, they're minerals. Jesus, Marie. I I'm pretty sure she's part of one of those subreddits where people post a picture and say, what's this rock? So she and a few others can identify it. Oh, there we go. There's a little bit of personality shining through. Some character development, if you will. Thank God for that. <laughs> uh, party demon. Whoa, it's the party demon, bro. He flexes his financial irresponsibility. He got extra mayo on his sandwich at Jimmy John's. Everybody bow before him. <laughs> uh, obviously, I'm uh, not his biggest fan, but... He was working his way back into my good graces in the last story. I'll, I'll hold back and we'll see how it goes for this story. We got Festival Girl as well. That's a, a new character in the list. The type of Festival Girl that was really into flow toys, light shows, and wearing clothes that looked like they were never washed. Ugh, dirty bitch. <laughs> Not the type of Festival Girl whose daddy buys him tickets to Coachella. She was pretty nice to everyone, and from the few times I interacted with her, she seemed like a pretty good person. Okay, so she's just dirty. I take back the B word. I I'm sorry, Festival Girl. I judged you without even getting to know you. But please, please, consider taking a shower. Before we begin, I wanted to answer a few questions from the last story. Why do I come off as hating Velveeta and overprotective of Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and so many of these? Wait until the last story and you will see. A lot of the hate that I have for him from what he does at the end comes through in my writing, I think. Honestly, you could lean into him a lot harder. These stories seem really self-centric. That's what I'm getting. Uh, like most of the time while I'm reading, if I'm quite honest. So how did I and Big Titty Goth Girlfriend start dating? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I'll be real frank with you. I, I, I really can't be asked about this. Uh, maybe Drunk Me was funny somehow, or maybe she likes edgelords, yeah! I mean, she is a goth after all. <laughs> I really have no idea. One day she asked me to hang out alone and it went well enough that she wanted me to keep hanging out. Just me and her. After a few of these hangout deals, I asked her if she wanted to be my girlfriend. We both dressed as pirates at a costume party. Surprisingly, she said yes. Can I ask you, I mean, first of all, I don't care about any of this. 
<laughs> Do you think she enjoys being referred to as big titty goth girlfriend? Is that flattering for her in some way? Or is she simply being objectified through this story? Are you still with her? Are you objectifying your, your current partner right now? Because whether it's a current or past partner, it's really not a good look. And it's been putting a bad taste in my mouth, but I thought that today I would address it as long as we're going off on tangents. I, I'm not sure why it was a surprise she said yes. Did you ask her out before you decided to dress up as pirates? Or is she just like a major romantic that just showed up at the party and she's like, I'm gonna fuck the first guy I see that's also dressed as a pirate. And whoa, it's the party demon, whoa! <laughs> uh, like I said, I, I don't give a shit about any of this. You know, were these actually questions that people had? I doubt it. <laughs> I could probably go through the comments and, and double check, but I'm not gonna waste my time, dude. This is OP just stroking his own ego, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, from the title, I'll probably find the beard deplorable in this story, uh, but that doesn't mean I can't also find a uh, party demon slightly repugnant as well. <laughs> it's not a pick one situation, okay? We can go all or nothing with these stories, and right now I'm definitely leaning towards all. Anyways, how did Velveeta Beard keep getting invited to these parties? After all, he wasn't the party demon, whoa! <laughs> oh God, just end me! Ugh, I don't know. It's totally possible that he just showed up and people didn't kick him out. I, I don't care. How can I physically care any less? I can't. <laughs> uh, how did he get invited? How did you get invited? These don't seem like people I want to hang around at any point of my life. God, now on to the story. Well, that was just a, a great intro. Got me nice and amped up. <laughs> uh, uh, so... There's one thing that I should explain about the imagery that I've been using to describe Velveeta Beard's actions. He loved power metal. I'm talking about high-pitched singing about unicorns and dragons with the high-pitched wiggly guitars playing in the background. Yeah, some of that old squibbly D. I get it. Y'all remember Warbeard? <laughs> it's a faint memory to me now. We'll probably wrap it up at some point, but um, yeah. The views were basically tanking for it. So yeah, uh, power metal is not OP's taste. I sadly still like 2011 emo. <laughs> uh, how are you going to come at power metal if you're into <laughs> early 2010s emo? Go take a break. Go stand in the corner. You're not allowed to talk to anybody. <laughs> Uh, when I was a young boy, my father took me into the city to see a marching band. Yeah, I'd much rather hear about a fucking marching band than, like, awesome dragons and unicorns, right? <laughs> Lay off it! Power metal isn't an inherently beardy thing. It kinda is. But that's okay. <laughs> that's why I like it. But Velveeta Beard's energy is that of a power metal solo. He was the most neurotic, nervous fuck, just wiggling and zipping all over the place at random while worrying about interactions that no one would worry about. Yeah, he's got some social anxiety. What? <laughs> just because you're too drunk to have social anxiety, you're, you're judging this dude for something that basically every human on the planet experiences. This is me right now. In a crowd, I'm neurotic as shit. The only time I'm actually comfortable is sitting in my room alone behind a microphone. Uh, somehow this never led him to think about how he interacted with the ladies. Yeah, of course. He's always been a killer with the miladies. I'm entitled to them. I opened the door. It ain't gonna suck itself. <laughs> uh, 
This is just you two. You you go stand in the corner. We got four corners in this room. Everybody can go into the fucking corner, okay? <laughs> you all need to stop. So now that we've seen Velveeta Beard in action when trying to woo a milady, I have some terrible news. He used to be so much worse. I didn't know Velveeta, Soybeard, or Big Titty Goth Girlfriend in college, but they all went to the same college and hung out with the same people. Big Titty Goth Girlfriend told me this story with a look of disgust years after it happened, so there isn't any dialogue, but it is one of the more disturbing tales. Yeah, and you stuck it right in the title. Just slap me in the face with it. <laughs> No suspense or anything. Just like, hey, some terrible shit's gonna happen. <laughs> okay, uh, I guess we're doing this today. So Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and Velveeta Beard were roommates in the same house they lived in when I had met them. At the time of this tale, she was away for the weekend, visiting family. How does she know that it happened? What's going on here? Velveeta Beard and Soy Beard were hanging out with a group of girls that Velveeta Beard knew from out of town. Oh, he knows girls? <laughs> How does he know girls? How does he know humans? <laughs> you think he'd just be running around with, with the wild beasts? <laughs> How he consistently convinced girls to hang out with him? I will never know. Are you salty about it though, OP? Having to go to parties by yourself and, and drink alone and, and no, no miladies? <laughs> Is that your problem? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just razzing OP too hard. I'm kind of stuck on the intro we had there. Let's give Velveeta Beard some hate today, shall we? Please? <laughs> Can I do that? Would you let me? Uh, maybe it was that he was so nice to everyone. God forbid. But his target milady had his strangely wide array of friends vouch for him. Maybe it was some sort of power metal wizardry. See? Now you're getting into power metal. Wow! That's what I'm about. Power and steel! Metal that's real! <laughs> I have said, No, man, he's just weird looking, but he he's super nice. When introducing Velveeta Beard to my less beardy friends multiple times. In my defense, he was really nice to me at the time, and... I was also really drunk at the time. Whoa! <laughs> I think that Velveeta Beard is just a pleaser, you know? He's so scared of conflict that he just wants to be nice to everybody all the time. And that comes from having uh, relatively, like, detached parents. Or parents that are overly critical. Because then you only want to please the reactive parent. You learn how to placate them, and you take that into your adult life and start placating everybody around you. Again, bubblegum armchair psychology, but um, I think it's applicable, perhaps. We don't know anything about Velveeta Beard's life, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say at least that much. So the girls, Velveeta Beard and Soy Beard, were all drinking. And eventually, Velveeta Beard brought them all back to the house after the parties they were at ended. It was a large house, so there was room for all the girls from out of town to sleep in the living room, while Velveeta slept in his room and Soybeard left. This, however, did not happen. Is he gonna make it weird? Is he gonna make it creepy? Is any of this consensual? Did Soybeard stay over? I have a lot of questions. Let's get them answered. <laughs> During the night, Velveeta Beard made multiple aggressive passes at one girl in the group. Like a knight riding a unicorn, he had set his courtly sights on a milady and would woo her in any way possible. <sighs> when they all returned to Velveeta Beard's house, the girl specifically told Velveeta, I do not want to have sex with you. <laughs> okay, laying her cards out on the table. I respect that, you know? You ever been at the club, you know, trying to trying to get with this lady all night, buying her drinks, and at the end of the night, she's like, oh, by the way, I got a boyfriend? Bitch, why'd you say that up front? <laughs> That's not happened to me, <laughs> but it did happen to one of my friends at the Navy, and he was so salty about it. I'm like, this is why you don't come to a club when you're single. I brought my girlfriend to the club. <laughs> I know I'm getting laid tonight. 
<laughs> but yes, uh, non sequitur. Maybe that's some party demon shit right there. I get laid, whoa! <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm married, I have children, what do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> this did not stop Velveeta Beard. The milady needed to be wooed. Even if she didn't want to be wooed. So Velveeta Beard did what any gentleman would. <laughs> He waited until she passed out and fingered her in her sleep. No, God, please, no, no, no. God, dude, God, how dare you? See, he's so nice on the surface, but he's got this slimy undercarriage that he never lets people see. Fucking disgusting. Why didn't we get to this in the first couple of parts? I could have hated Velveeta Beard so much this entire time. Ugh! Put him against the wall! This is considered rape, in my opinion. No, not just in your opinion. You don't need to add, in my opinion. That is textbook. And it's also a fucking disgusting thing to do. Yes! <laughs> Any decent human being would agree. Soybeard, of course, was there. He knew. And he did what he always did. Nothing. And then talked about math rock. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Oh, how could this happen? This is why we don't sleep over at, at boy's house. You know, it's a rule when you're 10 years old. It should also be a rule way up until you're, I don't know, fucking 30 or something like that. Probably just never. If you're, if you're not my significant other, I'm not going to sleep over at your house. That is what I usually go with. And then, the bigger question becomes, if Big Titty Goth Girlfriend told OP this story, knows all about this, why is she still hanging out with him? Not just hanging out with him, living with him! You sleep next to Velveeta Beard every night. I'm sick! <laughs> The only thing that redeems this story is the mental picture that I have in my head of like Velveeta Beard being a disgusting creep and Soybeard standing in the corner like, what are you doing, raping a chick? Well, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> minus the bear and they might be giants. How about that math rock, huh? <laughs> uh, you understand your, your friend is doing like one of the most heinous things that you could do to another person. Uh, this woman is going to carry around trauma for the rest of her life because Velveeta Beard couldn't let go of his dumbass cum fantasy. Ugh. God, it's rough. Somebody do something. Uh, take him out back. Put the boots to him. Medium style. Or hard style. Velveeta Beard later told Big Titty Goth Girlfriend of his aggressive wooing for some beardly reason only known to him. And she didn't like kick him out immediately, leave the house, something like that. She and her boyfriend at the time had multiple talks, Reed shaming him with Velveeta about not being a fucking rapist after which they thought he eventually reformed his ways. No, I think that's once that's in somebody, that's just in somebody. He's just going to find another target or be more sneaky about it in the future. We need to put him against the wall. All in all, it's just a brick in the wall. He seemed contrite and said he couldn't control himself. And he had problems. Yeah, blame problems and self-control. Don't take any responsibility for the fucking thing that you did. It's not me. It's just the problems that I have that made me do it. It's so roundabout. It's not even contrite. This is not contrition. This is a false apology in its purest form. And people are buying this. Ugh. Chemical castration. Or manual castration, or, or any kind of castration. Or just put him in a box and bury him forever. <laughs> I'd be okay with that too. That'll fix it too. Ugh. You will see in later tales that he did, in fact, have problems. But he was not reformed. Rapists don't 
reform. I don't know what the girl decided to do, but she definitely found out about it from Big Titty Goth Girlfriend, I think. She didn't even wake up during this? Oh man, this gotta be even worse. I'd be at such an impasse, like, do you tell somebody about this? Do you not? Like, yes, I'm going to, to scar you for life. Maybe it's better that she doesn't know. I mean, she she deserves to know, but that's got to be a hard one. That's that's not an easy conversation to have. Hey, you remember when you slept at my house the other week? Yeah, Velvita well, Beer stuck his fingers inside you. Ugh. Oh, oh. Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, it is so heavy, man. <laughs> the title let me know that it was going to be heavy, but yeah, I, I, I'm still having a hard time with it. Well, that was horrible to write out. How do you think I feel reading it? And it makes me question why, after hearing of it, I didn't put the boots to Velveeta Beard. And that's what I said. <laughs> I grew more wary of him. But it had been four years since that had happened when I met Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and another year after that before I even heard about it, so I also thought that he was reformed. The rapey, nightmare anime man that he must have been before I met him still haunts my dreams. You can put an end to him. You can stop all of this right now with a bullet. <laughs> or, or, or some steel-toed boots. Or a bat. Or just your fist. Whatever you choose, he deserves some form of punishment. God, I hope this ends with Velveeta Beard in prison. If he's just out there walking around, I'm not going to be able to sleep at night. After you hopefully now hate Velveeta, confirmed. <laughs> Let's get on to the main story. That's not the main story. <laughs> How is that a, a sideline? What? <laughs> we are now about six months into Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and I's relationship, which means I've been friend with the beard for about that long. One thing that Big Titty Goth Girlfriend had told me was that her ex was friends with Velveeta Beard before they met, but began to hate him after they started dating. She never understood why, but I suspect he knew of Velveeta Beard's secret love for Big Titty Goth Girlfriend. Something that I would find out about much too late. Bro, I clocked that in the first part of this story. What are you talking about? <laughs> Protect your lady. Keep your head on a swivel. How you just gonna be like, oh, I didn't know. I had no idea. C come on, man. The signs were there. <laughs> you wrote this story out and the signs were there the entire time. So one Tuesday morning, like the degenerate I am, I decided to go buy watermelons. Why did I do this? Well, to get fucked up, of course. For it was pretty much the only thing I cared about at that point in my life. Yeah, we're gonna ferment these watermelons, bro. Did you make us some jungle juice over there? It's pretty good shit, though. <laughs> you ever soak an apple in some, in some bourbon and you come back and eat it? Wow. You gotta, you gotta skin it first. And then the bourbon soaks in and you get really fucked up off just eating some fruit. <laughs> Bourbon's probably not the best pick either, to be clear. But this is what we did in the Navy. Anyways, I carved out the watermelons and filled them with an entire bottle of champagne. Did I cut the corks off the champagne bottles with my katana? Only after teleporting behind them. <laughs> oh. You want it to be ironic, but I don't think it's coming off as ironic. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ, man. Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and I drank one of the Champagne Melons each at 10 a.m. Whoa, day drinking, bro. I don't want to be functional anymore. Whoa. <laughs> then we took some gravity bong hits and we hit the town. Yeah, get out there. Go embarrass yourself. What do you want? <laughs> uh, I swear, dude. Every time I try to pull back from the OP just a little bit, I'm like, okay, you know, he's not as hateable as this other guy. He comes in with this like, uh, uh, I drink beers. Hey, you guys want to do some beers? <laughs> I'm the party demon. Whoa. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, stop, dude. This is not relevant to the story at all. It just makes you look like a jerk off. Sitting out here stroking your own ego. Hey, did you guys know you could put champagne in a watermelon? Yes, we did. Everybody that's over the age of fucking 14 knows about jungle juice, all right? Just, <laughs> just stop. Why are you out of the corner? I told you to get the get back in the corner. <laughs> uh, I'm just wondering when everybody's gonna clap. <laughs> what is this, dude? Uh, all right, moving on. <laughs> I wanted sandwiches from the place that Velveeta Beard worked at. Yeah, so I pulled out that rubber band. They call me the rubber band man. I bought so many sandwiches, son. Extra mayo on all of them bitches. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we made the arduous six block journey. There I was at the local sandwich shop. Whipping out Fliff like a sultan, not even counting it. Oh yeah, I got that sandwich money, son. Oh! <laughs> uh, stop it. Stop it! You, you're killing me, you're killing everybody. Everybody's dying right now. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, aren't there other sandwich shops around? Why must you insist on going to buy a sandwich made by the hands of a sexual deviant? <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> Where's the brakes on this shit, dude? How do I get off this train? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, tell us all about your sandwich money, OP. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe he is going over the top for no reason about it, but it feels like, he feels like he's just trying to flex after so much flexing. Flexing about buying some sandwiches. <laughs> I'm dead! Uh... I was buying big titty goth girlfriend whatever the fuck she desired. Oh yeah, get extra banana peppers, baby. I'm crazy. <laughs> you rolling with the party demon, whoa. <laughs> uh, oh, I was perfect. I was important, and funny, and helpful, and seemingly rich, and I had the body of a heavy lifter. Oh, God, dude. God! How does Velveeta Beard essentially assault a girl, and you still come off as like the bigger fucking douchebag in the story? I'm shocked! I am sh shocked! This is an accomplishment. This is an achievement all on its own. How? What are you doing? How? <laughs> what the fuck, man? It was like the part in the movies where the hero shows up to claim his hard-earned medal and all of his enemies in the crowd start shrugging off their grudges and, and clapping their asses off. In reality? Oh, okay. It's just like compare and contrast type of stuff. <laughs> I showed up to a sandwich shop, pretty drunk at 11 a.m. and covered in watermelon. Pulled out like $50, dropped slash threw it all on the ground while trying to pay, and bought way too much food. I legitimately don't know why Big Titty Goth Girlfriend wanted to date me, considering that I was like this 90% of the time. Uh, three words, I guess. Low. Self. Esteem. <laughs> Uh, I feel bad for Big Titty Goth Girlfriend, if anything, hanging out with this dude. Seriously, uh, considering a relationship, investing her time and emotion into a person like this. It is funny how, you know, alcohol can make you think that you're bigger than you are. OP does a good job of explaining that, at least in this paragraph, but I think maybe you did gas yourself up a little too much because... <laughs> that, like, sarcastic bent carries throughout the entire story. I just can't unsee it, honestly. So, okay, I take it back. Velveeta Beard's still the bigger douchebag in the story, since you don't actually mean you were perfect, etc., etc., but... 
I don't know, man. We're walking a fine line. <laughs> uh, so we arrive back at her house like a drunken sandwich eating tornado of degeneracy. I mean, y'all are degenerates. I appreciate you not going into too much detail, though. <laughs> Big titty goth girlfriend ready to drink water and lay down. Me, ready to drink another champagne melon. Take some more bong rips and change my shirt. Because I'm the party demon. Whoa! Post isn't even about Velveeta Beard, dude. This is so off the rails. It's like, yeah, he worked at the sandwich shop. <laughs> That's it! I hate this. I hate this! Ugh. This is when I'm introduced to Festival Girl. What does this have to do with the Velveeta Beard? The title Beard of the Saga has got no play! Can we, can we get back to the beard story, please? Please! <laughs> How do I, how do I get home from here? I tried clicking my heels together three times, it doesn't fucking work! I'm still here! It's this fever dream and I can't get out! Oh, Festival girl was just sitting in big titty goth girlfriend's living room when we came back. What? <laughs> uh, goth girlfriend says, hi festival girl! Where's Velveeta Beard? Festival Girl says, uh, I don't know, he, he's like upstairs somewhere. <laughs> Goth Girlfriend says, okay, cool. Wasn't he just working at the sandwich shop? Huh? I guess it's just the shop that he worked at, but he wasn't working there at the moment. Yeah, whatever, I, I don't care. Okay, he's upstairs now, great. <laughs> Velveeta Beard rushed down the stairs like the lightning that shoots out of a power metal unicorn's horn at that moment and ushered Festival Girl up to his room. I like how he has these like little digs at power metal or whatever like, Ooh, I got such great taste in music guys, let's go listen to some Panic at the Disco. Unicorns are dumb, let's listen to some Green Day. You guys like Fall Out Boy? Dragons are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm, I'm not dying on that hill with you. I'm gonna go the dragons and unicorns hill if I really gotta pick. Truth is, deep down, folk punk and gangster rap are my jam, but I'm not gonna shame anybody else for their taste in music. Unless they're doing their part to shame uh, yet another person, like OP's doing with Velveeta, then I'll come at you. Then I'll dunk on you <laughs> and not feel any regrets about it. OP says, uh, who's that? Goth girlfriend says, that's Festival Girl. She's hooking up with Velveeta Beard, but won't date him. I don't know. She's been coming over a lot lately. Velveeta says he keeps asking her to be his girlfriend, but she still has a thing for her ex-boyfriend who lives a few states away. Ooh, that, <laughs> that's smart. You getting cucked by her ex, Velveeta, and you just, you just gotta sit around and take that? You gonna be the, the filler man? Play second fiddle? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Have more self-respect than that, would you? I mean, I know he doesn't, but please, at least practice it. OP says, that sucks for him. Especially since he's been trying to get a girlfriend for so long. He totally doesn't have one, like me, the party demon. Whoa! <laughs> uh, uh, note. That Velveeta Beard had been complaining about wanting a girlfriend ever since Pie Girl started dating the Pickler. Big titty goth girlfriend? Yeah, apparently he really likes her too. Yeah, he really likes her, but she really likes some other dude that's two states away and she's not gonna commit to him because that other dude two states away, he must have like the biggest dick energy. That's like real Chad status. <laughs> she's like, I don't wanna date you. I think about him every time we're together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, FLV the beard just like, oh, that's okay, I guess. <laughs> Want to be my girlfriend? <laughs> uh, oh, Lord. Somehow, Velvi the beard had seduced a milady. I think that's taken a little far. <laughs> she, she settled with him. He's convenient for right now. <laughs> She's obviously not seduced. 
despite his grossness. But he couldn't make that step from hookup to girlfriend that he so desperately desired. Later that day, after Festival Girl leaves, Velveeta emerges from his nest, smelling of beard sex and Velveeta. See, Festival Girl, uh, we're not calling her a leg beard as such, but she definitely got some leg beard vibes. <laughs> Dude definitely banged a leg beard, and, and she's a leg beard that doesn't even want to be with a fellow beard. She's got eyes for a dude that ain't even here no more. You really shouldn't lay down and accept something like this, but we know Velveeta Beard will. Velveeta says, I don't know why she won't be my girlfriend. It's probably because she's still trying to hook up with her stupid ass ex. He was abusive too. I don't know why she's still into him. I'm a better guy than him. Whatever. Fuck Festival Girl. <laughs> so he says, until the next time she shows up. And then he's like, oh yeah, all those morals and whatever, all that big game that I talked, we're gonna shove all that aside. Go ahead, take my dignity with you. <laughs> uh, OP says, sorry man, that sucks. Why don't you try to date somebody who like, wants a relationship, Velveeta. I just need her to stop talking with her ex and be with me. I don't know why she's still into him. Yeah, you, you said that already. My response is the same as from before. <laughs> OP just said, yeah, dude, just move on. Hook up with her and cut it off when you start dating someone else. Oh, keep her on the back burner. Yeah, I've done that before too, I guess. <laughs> it's not a good look, honestly. I'm not gonna advocate it these days, but I'm guilty of it, so I can't dig into it too hard. Velveeta Beard says, uh, But she needs to be with me. She's into me. We're hooking up. OP, it seems like a rebound. Velveeta Beard sulked for a while until I eventually got him to drink a champagne melon with me. Yeah, here we go. That'll fix everything. Just fill that hole in your heart with, uh, alcoholic melon drink. If I wanted to listen to someone talk about how much they fucking like to drink, I'd just sit back and rewatch Kavanaugh's Senate testimony. <laughs> uh, that might be a deep cut. You guys remember? If you don't remember, you could go look it up. <laughs> the video's almost over. Just put that one in your back pocket. <laughs> Velveeta Beard would make these types of comments every time after Festival Girl came over. For some reason, I believed Velveeta Beard, and I began to dislike Festival Girl because she made my beardy friend sad. But isn't this like you've recently gone through the lying about Pie Girl and whatnot? Have you not learned from that, OP? There's being a good friend, and there's being a fucking enabler. <laughs> There were multiple times in which Festival Girl would go down south, according to Velveeta Beard, to try and get back with her ex, while he moped around the house, all sad about it. Oh, I thought go down south was a euphemism. You know, she, she actually means travel. <laughs> she traveled to the south. <laughs> uh, oh my god. I guess it do be like that, and, you know, until you find some self-respect, it's going to continue to be like that. There wasn't much beardery in terms of Velveeta talking in this story, but Festival Girl and the way Velveeta Beard acted about her is important for later, so I'll tell you some beardy things that Velveeta did on the regular. Oh, thank God. I thought this whole thing was just like, hey, he sexually assaulted a girl, but that's the side note. Mostly it's about I got drunk. Watch me go to the sandwich shop. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> Kill me right now. I'm right here. Come on, do it. Kill me. <laughs> Velveeta Beard was a man who rarely brushed his teeth, despite showering even less frequently. I'm not sure what he used on his hair, but it didn't help because the ends were fried to shit, despite smelling what I imagine like a 90s shampoo commercial smells like. He also was someone who got food all over their beard when they ate, and didn't notice. He's saving it for later. 
This led to Velveeta looking like the singer of a power metal cover band who had just scarfed a few mayonnaise sandwiches down with little regard for where the mayonnaise was going. Have you ever heard of that Japanese uh, power metal cover band, Bukaki? This, uh, <laughs> that's a great one. Uh, go look it up. <laughs> uh, uh, that's what the mayonnaise beard reminds me of. He would constantly stand in a leaning back position, head tilted forward and arms sort of out in front of him, similar to a less intense JoJo's Bizarre Adventure pose. I later learned that he did this because uh, that's how they stand in anime. Did he really say that though? <laughs> oh no. In addition to this, he never stopped burping and farting. God, we couldn't be friends. Doesn't matter if you're the nicest person in the world. If you're just like shameless about burping and farting, we got to go. <laughs> I'm stepping outside to fart with my wife. We've been together six years. I just know she doesn't want to smell my farts. So I step outside because that's what humans do. It's almost as if he enjoyed the sound so much that he would do it in the presence of anyone and in public. And once he bragged that he went to a restaurant and farted up a storm. <laughs> These numbers do not, do not <laughs> add up. Who did this to us? God damn it, I'm here on business! Uh, oh, yeah, he disgusting. For real, for real, uh, very disgusting on many levels. I still hate him more than OP, but the most amazing part to me is that <laughs> OP kind of kind of closed the gap a little bit. Like I said, very thin line between these two. I still find OP slightly more likable than I did in the first story, but not quite as likable as I did in the second story. You know, the second story where we actually talked about the beard. Ugh. Velveeta Beard also hated nature to the point that he would physically cringe if a piece of grass touched his bare skin. No way, dude. <laughs> What is he, fucking goblin? Goth girlfriend and I loved the woods and would hike all the time. When Velveeta Beard would come with us, he was always nervously yelling, "Ew!" as sticks or plants touched his calves. Why didn't he just wear pants? I have no idea. Maybe you could ask him to, like, not come with you. But like, yeah, this is just the nature hike with me and my, my own milady, which is actually just a watermelon that I wrote Big Titty Goth Girlfriend on top of, <laughs> and I took it into the woods. <laughs> uh, oh, I think the only reason I stayed friends with him for so long was that he had one redeeming quality. He was always excited to do whatever it was that any of his friends were doing. You see, that goes back to that pleaser thing that I mentioned earlier. He doesn't actually want to go into the woods with you guys. He's just a pleaser. He wants to please th his people as he sees it. He was the ultimate hype man, as long as you weren't in the way of him and his desired milady, which you kind of are if he desires Big Titty God Girlfriend, right? W when's the mask going to come off? He was genuinely nice to me until he wasn't. And pretty fun to hang out with if you liked anime, drinking, and weed, as long as a milady he was actively courting wasn't there. Hey, wow, I don't like any of those things. Maybe weed, but I mean, even that is a long time in my past now. <laughs> I don't think we'd get along. Well, that's the third installment of Velveeta Beard. I'm remembering more as I write these out, so the next ones will probably have more details. He was a wild guy to be friends with. Can't believe I didn't see all the nice guy bullshit and lies as they were happening, but I did attribute that to being constantly drunk and edgy, and it makes for some delicious cringe. So enjoy these stories from the two years of beardery that I endured. So I am absolutely shocked that like the, the assault of the woman was just kind of a side note in this story. That's disgusting. I mean, I guess it happened before OP knew Velveeta Beard. It doesn't fit into the timeline necessarily, but to like lead out the story with that and then go into like, yeah, and we got totally drunk and stuff. It, it kind of took the thunder away from it. You know what I mean? It kind of made it not as impactful as it should have been. If you, if you stuffed it into the end of the story, 
I think it would have hit a lot harder. I guess it's just, you know, story structure problems and stuff like that, but we also don't get enough focus on the beard, and I, I think that's a big problem, too. OP just loves to talk about himself, and I'm like, please, it's called Velveeta Beard. Could we hear something else about the beard? <laughs> It drives me nuts, honestly. It's really impressive to me that OP could be like a Mary Sue in his own stories. It kind of reminds me of like those uh, big Irish guru and spooky. I know people have talked about those stories in my comments. They're like, they're so fake and horrible, never ever read them. Well, guess what? If I need some more rage fuel, if I feel like dunking on an OP, that is exactly what we are going to do. I'm gonna go dig through those stories, pull them out, and just slam them like they've never been slammed before. There's too many nice Reddit narrators out there. I ain't here to be nice. I'm here to be real. Lay it down quite flat and tell you how it is, or at least how I feel. At least how I feel in the moment. Sometimes I go back and watch it the next day and I'm like, it's a little harsh, but <laughs> in the moment, I did feel that. You want some Pickle Rick on your sandwich? <laughs> I'm Pickle Rick! Velveeta Beard 4, part 1. 4 1? Is that. <laughs> What's going on here? The Halloween weekend of the living Velveeta. Alright, sure. Why not? A little Halloween special. It's a little bit out of season, but not by that much, I guess. God, this year's just flown by. What? Where's my life going? <laughs> I wish I could just wind it back for, for just a little bit. Hold on just a little bit longer. We're already halfway through the goddamn year. Oh, just give me a moment while I have a bit of an existential crisis. Okay. Posted in two parts due to Reddit's character limit. Oh, that accursed character limit. YouTube also has a character limit. Like, if you got too much character, then people will tell you, Hey, Reddit, you rant too much during the videos. And I'm like, get out! Get out! I don't want to tell you! <laughs> uh, we've gone from just being a character to, to being a downright asshole. That's fine. It's all, it's all fine here. Uh, part two is, yeah, over there, we got that, episodes one, two, and three. Those links down in the description if you haven't seen them quite yet. And, uh, it's the same old cast, but here's a new character, who is middle school nice guy. Weren't we all kind of nice guys in middle school? I will go ahead and admit that I was, because that's about the, the point where you're experimenting with dating, you're, you're overprotective with your girlfriend and shit like that. At that age, you have an excuse. Middle school, that, that's fine, as far as I'm concerned. You're getting it figured out. But yes, he is a nice guy that Velveeta Beard, Big Titty Goth Girlfriend, and I encounter in this episode. Why y'all hanging out with middle schoolers? <laughs> How did you cross paths with a middle schooler? That's what I really want to know. Seems a little sus. Just the slightest bit sus. <laughs> but okay, I give it a pass. Whatever, man. He was a short, balding man who thought he was cooler than everyone in the room because he didn't dress up for Halloween. He's called Middle School Nice Guy because he taught middle school. Oh! <laughs> I, I am greatly relieved by that. Thank fuck. <laughs> I was going to have uh, a real problem with that, but okay, he's a teacher. Probably shouldn't be a teacher because he doesn't know a damn thing himself, but good for OP, I mean. Really unfortunate for all of his students, but OP gets a pass for this one. <laughs> Edit. I added another interaction of Velveeta Beard being cringy to this one. Thinking about it, the whole interaction I added should have been in this story originally. Yeah, you, you tend to do that, OP. <laughs> you just go off in the woods and you're like, let me tell you about this time that I put champagne in a, in a watermelon. And I'm like, where's, what happened? It's a neckbeard story, not cool party demon whoa story, right? Let's keep that in mind in, in the future. <laughs> I feel like these are just too much of me doing drunk weird shit 
when I have more creepy Velveeta beard interactions that I could be including that, for some reason, I didn't think were relevant when writing these the first time. <sighs> Fuck. This is why we should, we should go beyond the first draft, okay? You can't just write a post and slap it up and be like, that's a masterpiece right there, because yes, it needs a rewrite, okay? You could you could save it as a draft in your little folder there and, and roll it around in your head a little bit. And then you probably won't get dunked on as much. It'll make the whole reading experience go a whole lot better for everyone involved, including the people listening. At least there is, like, a, a bit of self-reflection trickling through. That lets me know that, uh, you know, me dunking on you, it is doing its job. <laughs> There is going to be some self-improvement in this goddamn post, whether you like it or not! <laughs> so good. I'm glad. I hope that we can, you know, build on this progress in, in, in next week's session. And uh, maybe we'll, you know, actually get a story that's like, 100% beard. OP just happens to be there. No more weird drunk shit. Pinky promise? <laughs> I know it's probably not gonna happen. And it does tell me a lot about, you know, your character. You, you are a bit self-absorbed, but as always, I do appreciate you sitting down to write the story, so I'm not gonna knock you too hard for it. At least it's more readable than Pizza Hut Beard. <laughs> Although that's a pretty low bar to get over. <laughs> uh, anyways, it was October, and Halloween is my favorite holiday. Party demon, whoa! Around this time of year, this very weekend, in fact, an anime convention is hosted in my small college town. Uh, while I'm not a connoisseur of the finer anime, I do like nerdy shit like Kingdom Hearts, as I apparently never grew out of my high school emo phase. God, that is so relatable. One of my, like, super emo bros in the Navy got a heartless tattoo on his chest, you know? And the tattoo actually looks super cool, until he went to, like, the hospital and got MRSA, and it just became, like, a giant scar on his chest. Oh, God. <laughs> I cringe just looking back at that. I had sewn a Kingdom Hearts Organization 13 costume for myself, and I was ready for Halloween! I know the costume is pretty stereotypical, edgy nerd shit, but I was into it at the time, and it was for Halloween. Yeah, I'm not gonna knock you for that, you know? Dress up as whatever you want. Halloween is your day. You can be whatever you want on that day, okay? At least you didn't get a heartless tattoo on your chest. They got infected with MRSA. Uh, I wish I could unsee it. I wish I could go back in time. <laughs> but let's backtrack to the previous weekend where Velveeta Beard tells me of his plan to combine Halloween costuming and this anime convention into a scheme to pick up cosplay ladies. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's gonna work out great for everybody involved. <laughs> I mean, I guess it is fairly easy to pick somebody up at an anime convention. You do know that you have at least one thing in common, right? I ain't never been to a convention myself, but I have to assume that it's a little bit easier than picking somebody up at the grocery store or, or something like that. Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and I were hanging out in a room smoking weed as we normally did every day, even though you didn't know where to buy it, right, OP? Oh, nowhere to buy weed. <laughs> it's a college town with a rehab, but where's the, where's the weed at? <laughs> Uh, no, I'm just razzing you. Get out of here, you crazy kids. Uh, when Velveeta Beard saunters in with manly Kate Moss confidence. Manly Kate Moss? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Velveeta Beard was so goddamn excited. Velveeta says, Guys! You know how the anime convention is next weekend? <laughs> well, I have the perfect costume. I'm going to be an alternate Rick from Rick and Morty. Yeah, you're going to be the doofus Rick. You know that guy eats his own shit, right? What's that dipshit doing out there? Are you friends with him? You know he eats his own shit, right? Oh, you guys are always so mean to me. That was only one time. <laughs> I'M THE WORST RICK OF THEM ALL! Uh, Velveeta Beard is the doofus Rick, bro. <laughs> OP just says, Nice! 
What parts of the costume do you have? Whoa. Velveeta Beard. I already ordered a lab coat. And I have the wig. This is so basic. Yeah, great. Awesome. That's all you need. <laughs> you don't want to make yourself like like a portal gun or something like that. <laughs> Instead, you're just like, yeah, spiky hair and a lab coat. What else do you want from me? I'm, I'm here to pick up chicks, not look like Rick from Rick and Morty. <laughs> I can tell. Velveeta Beard then quickly runs up to his room and returns wearing a spiked blue wig. Long blonde hair flowing out from all sides. <laughs> Uh, he wore it this way, almost like a hat, when actually wearing the costume as well. <laughs> uh, Velveeta Beard, you gotta, like, put your hair up if you're gonna wear the wig, or if you want a believable wig. Maybe that's how he gets away with it. He's just like, I'm an alternate Rick. I'm the blonde Rick. <laughs> uh -uh. I don't know what the hell is going on here, but okay. It's a bold strategy. Let's see if it works out for him, Cotton. Velveeta Beard. I even convinced this one girl I worked with to be my Morty. <laughs> but guys, the anime convention is happening right downtown. And cosplayers are going to come into the sandwich shop. And they'll see my sweet cosplay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Sandwich Shop Rick! <laughs> you want some Pickle Rick on your sandwich? <laughs> I'm Pickle Rick! Uh, oh my god, bro. I'm Fat Neck Beard Rick! <laughs> uh, uh, put the Mountain Dew up your ass, Morty. You gotta put it way up there. <laughs> oh, Rick! <laughs> Uh, uh, if you poof it, it's free, Morty. Come on, help Grandpa out. <laughs> uh, he turned himself into a sandwich. It, fuck it, the funniest shit I ever seen. <laughs> the memes write themselves, honestly. I'm so glad that we got a Rick and Morty episode of Velveeta Beard. <laughs> uh, oh. Anyways, OP says, yeah, that's actually a pretty good idea. I feel like you get bigger tips for being in cosplay and waiting on cosplayers. Velveeta's like, eh, yeah, uh, the tips. He's not trying to get the tips. He's trying to give the tip. You know what I'm saying? Hey, because his whole penis is, is just the tip. It's a micro penis situation. It's really, really quite sad if you think about it too much. <laughs> OP Yeah The tips <laughs> Okay we've established It's not actually for the tips It's for the miladies It's been mentioned three times already And with that sort of foreshadowing You know surely uh, he's going to get a milady At the end of all this right Velveeta Beard says I was thinking we could convince Some cosplay girls to hang out With me after my shift you know, because because we both like anime. <laughs> and Rick is fucking awesome. What girl wouldn't want to be with him? He's a genius. Yes, Rick and Morty is my favorite anime. <laughs> <laughs> and just because you cosplay a genius... Yes, it does make you a genius, as a matter of fact. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. 90% sure you put on that wig and it, it just ingrains itself into your brain and suddenly you realize how to travel through dimensions. <laughs> uh, uh, it's also pretty classic that he's like, yeah, I want to convince some cosplay girls to hang out with me. Like, how many girls are you looking to disappoint, bro? <laughs> as many as possible, apparently. <laughs> uh, just stop. You'd be lucky to get one, okay? <laughs> Her self-esteem has got to be bottom of the barrel. How many chicks like that do you think are walking around? Well, probably at an anime convention. You know what? I take it back. <laughs> uh, wind that whole thing back. Big Titty Goth Girlfriend says he's always drunk, an asshole to everyone, and 
constantly burping. What about that do you think that girls are into? Velvet a beard. Ugh, you don't understand anime girls. Rick is so cool. I'm gonna get all the cosplay girls. I'm even doing the voice. Yeah, neckbeard Rick voice. That'll be an interesting one when we get to it. <laughs> and again, is he is he painting Rick and Morty as an anime? I'm going with that as well. Not ironically in any way whatsoever. Rick and Morty is my favorite anime. Don't at me in the comments. <laughs> OP just says, I don't think this is going to work, man. Whoa. Velveeta. Shut up, guys. It'll work. You'll both see. Come in next weekend, and you'll see me getting cosplay girls numbers left and right. Yeah, <laughs> I think that he thinks that he's doing way better than he is. I mean, hope floats, you know, you, you gotta give yourself a reason to exist from weekend to weekend, but yeah, all of this is going to lead to disappointment, I'm pretty sure. Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and I did come in the next weekend after the events of this story, and this is what we saw. Bro, we Tarantinoing all over the fucking place right now. Hold up, wait a minute, <laughs> take a breath, okay? I would really prefer a, a linear story if we're having trouble telling the story properly. But okay, it, it's your show, you know? I mean, it's my show, but it, it's your moment to be on my show. <laughs> so do what you gotta do, I guess. There were actually a lot of people in cosplay eating at this sandwich shop as it was a pretty big sit-down place where you could also order from the counter and it was like two blocks from the convention center. Velveeta Beard was spastically sprinting around to all the tables that he was waiting on with his Morty co-worker in tow. <laughs> He's really trying to impress some people right now. This is adorable. This is my Morty. Can I please have your phone number? <laughs> <laughs> Who would agree to be his Morty, honestly? I want to be the Morty for the shittiest Rick in existence. No! Come on now! He would insult her in the same way that Rick would insult Morty in the show, in front of all of his customers. I guess you, you find a chick with daddy issues enough, and, and maybe she will be into that sort of Rick. <laughs> but it's sad. Then he would do this sort of weird, in-character negging towards all the women at the table while burping. <laughs> I can't do a burp on command, so we're going to go ahead and skip that part of the voice. I'm pretty sure he also had a flask on him as well. Was he drunk while at work? I don't know, but he was pretty fucking committed to being in character. Yeah, can we, can we fire him? <laughs> He's terrible at what he does. Why are you walking around harassing customers at the table? I'm trying to sit down and have a fucking sandwich. Get back behind the counter, sandwich monkey. <laughs> I'm sandwich monkey Rick. <laughs> uh, oh, God. I feel like the logic of this type of Rick and Morty fan is always, I'm a drunk asshole, and this genius cartoon character is also a drunk asshole, and therefore... I must be a genius. Honestly, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's like a vast portion of Rick and Morty fans. I don't want to come at the show as a whole, but I will just a little bit. <laughs> Maybe I hate it so much because I was a drunk asshole. Did you also watch Rick and Morty? <laughs> I'm Party Demon Rick! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I just hate it so much because being drunk or smart doesn't give you an excuse to be mean to people. Oh, you've cut me to the quick right there, OP. I'm dumb and sober, and I just, uh, I'm just mean to a lot of people on principle. But I shouldn't be mean to the OPs, honestly. They're out here writing stories, doing their best. Yeah, it w there was no second, third, fourth draft, but at least he presented a, t a tale for me to read, okay? What more can we really ask for? I'd like to say that I'd wind it back that that sentence would cause me to change, but honestly, <laughs> I really do like being an asshole. Although I don't really think that I'm, I'm that way for no reason. That's my defense. <laughs> if I'm mean to you, you, you probably deserved it in some type of way. 
And if you didn't, then okay, I'll admit that I was wrong, but most of the time, I think I'm pretty on point with that. Anyway, I'm piecing together what he said, as Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and I were only sitting close to a few of the tables that he was waving at, but, uh, here's how it went, Velveeta. Uh, what do you guys want? Morty Waiter. Uh, our specials are... Velveeta. Shut up, Morty. No one cares about your specials. <laughs> uh, then the table tries to order. Velveeta directed at one of the girls. Uh, what's your cosplay of? Cosplay girl? Oh, it's, uh... Whatever cosplay it was supposed to be. Velveeta. It's pretty good. But I could do better. I could show you how to make it better. We could hang out after my shift. Whoa, whoa. You're coming out way too thirsty. That's way too strong, Velveeta Neckbeard Rick. <laughs> Take a couple of steps backwards, okay? At least he is coming correct, you know? He, he doesn't have any pretenses. He's not trying to pretend and make it something that it's not, but to me, it feels like he's just trying a little bit too hard right there. From, hey, what's your cosplay about, to like, I could make it better, we should hang out. <laughs> Pump the brakes, don't insult the person you're trying to hang out with, and maybe try like a couple more sentences in there <laughs> before you invite them to hang out. Jesus. Cosplay girl, of course, doesn't fall for any of this, and she's just like, uh, haha, that's okay. <laughs> Velveeta, fine, burps and takes a swig from his flask. If you want to look as bad as Morty here, <laughs> bro, you got hair hanging out the side of your wig. Don't come at Morty, he's a precious boy. Velveeta, all right, Morty and I will be back with your order. <clears throat> Go fuck this up, Morty. Morty. Oh, okay, Rick. Velveeta. You know, Morty, I'm going to get that girl's number. She's uh, definitely into me. We'll probably meet up at the anime convention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Just keep hope alive. See, even when he's shot down, he's just like, I still got a chance. <laughs> Stand in the corner, bro. Think about what you're doing with your life, all right? This girl obviously wants you to leave her alone, but you're like, nah, I'm going to stalk her at the convention. <laughs> uh, what would make you think that that's a good idea? So as great as this wooing was... Velveeta Beard did not get a single cosplay anime girl that would totally be into Rick. You guys just don't understand. Number. I'm shocked. Shocked! Well, not that shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Saw that one coming from a mile away, but again, as long as it gives him what he needs to continue existing, sure. Okay, let him think whatever he wants. Fast forward to the day of this story. Oh, that's right, the sandwich shop was after the story happened, so... We're, we're Tarantinoing again? Okay. Sure, why not? Have it your way. <laughs> Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and I were hanging out when Soybeard and his girlfriend arrived at Big Titty Goth Girlfriend's house unannounced. I mean, unannounced to you, but wasn't Soybeard Velveeta Beard's friend? So maybe he invited him or something and you just weren't privy to that? We talked about our Halloween costumes for a while, then Big Titty Goth Girlfriend decided to go to the store to get some food. It was at that moment that Soybeard put on a blistering math rock solo, and I knew, deep down in my brain's heart, that the day was about to shift into shittiness. Why you feel this way about math rock, OP? Honestly, I haven't, like, seen or heard Soybeard do anything that horrible. I mean, he, he did sort of stand idly by while Velveeta assaulted the chick. That ain't too cool, but my working theory is that OP finds Soybeard threatening. Because Soybeard has a personality outside of, I'm the party demon, let's get drunk, whoa! <laughs> you know, he, he's into music and he's got a girl, he's got his own stuff going on. And OP just gets uh, really defensive when he can't be the coolest one in the room. Again, working theory, but uh, that is 
what I have gleaned from every interaction between Soybeard and Party Demon, limited though they may be. Uh, Velveeta Beard had just gotten off of work, and neither of us had eaten yet, so we decided to get some food. Namely, 99 cents a box Velveeta-based meals. And he's feeding you and shit? Sure, he's a cringe lord, but how can you pass up free eats, right? <laughs> Honestly, the one time that I tried him with a Velveeta beard, they weren't terrible. No idea how he ate them for almost every meal, though. Mac and cheese good, bro. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Velveeta mac and cheese? Yeah, that, that's some of the best stuff out there, all right? The only thing that can top that, that box shit is, is when wifey does it. Oh, she sprinkles bacon bits on it. Oh. What a woman. I'm so lucky to have this woman in my life. I don't have to worry about box mac and cheese anymore. She's like, you want some mac and cheese? We'll make it up right here. I'm like, oh, she says we, even though it's only her doing it. Fucking God bless that woman. Not even the best meal that she makes. She's so talented. She's so wonderful. I could go on, but uh, I, I, I don't want to make the story about myself because I'm not party demon. Whoa! <laughs> After we got back to Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and Velveeta Beard's house, Velveeta convinced us to go to the anime convention before hitting up some Halloween parties. Yeah, we gotta go party, bro, because I'm the party demon, bro. Whoa! <laughs> Are you too cool for the anime convention? Apparently he's not. And again, you know, OP's going... To wingman Velveeta Beard. I mean, even the best wingman in the world isn't going to get Velveeta Beard any play. But I guess good on you for, for never giving up hope. <laughs> uh, Velveeta Beard wanted to check out the cosplay ladies. Uh, we all worked in the service industry, besides Soy Beard. And there were parties going on almost every weekend in October, thrown by whoever wasn't working. Yeah! So I can make it my whole personality, boy! <laughs> There's another thing. Soybeard wasn't in the service industry. Do you feel threatened by that? You can be honest with me, OP. Just be like, I, I didn't like him because he was a more interesting and, and well-adjusted person than I was. And I'll be like, okay, at least you're being honest, you know? I respect that much. But instead, it's just all vague. Like, yeah, Soybeard's a piece of shit. He likes math rock, whatever. <laughs> That's really your base. Okay, fine. Have it your way. You feel how you feel. <laughs> Anyways, we all put on our costumes. Big Titty Goth Girlfriend was a pretty good vampire, and Velveeta Beard was a horribly accurate alternate Rick. He burped just as much, was almost drunk just as much, and was a complete asshole. His costume was actually pretty good. And it was back when the show had first come out, so there were like a hundred Ricks all wandering around the anime convention. God, that sounds like an absolute nightmare. <laughs> Which alternate Rick are you? I'm Neckbeard Rick! I'm B.O. Rick! <laughs> I'm Poop My Pants Rick! <laughs> uh, can y'all just go home? Can y'all just stop it? Velveeta Beard was taking pictures with the other Ricks and the random singular Morty and trying to talk at various miladies as he normally did. Yes, talk at them is extremely accurate. It's interesting that nobody wants to be a Morty. Everybody wants to be a fucking Rick. Too many chiefs, not enough Indians, you know what I'm saying? Then Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and I left and decided to go to the Halloween parties. So we're just leaving the beard behind again? I guess we did get like, you know, a bit of a aftermath story before the, the actual story happened. But there is no actual story. It's like, yeah, he went to the convention and took pictures and then we left. <laughs> Come on, dude. Did he do anything cringeworthy? Are you gonna make this about yourself? Don't do it. We were doing so well, OP. We were doing so well. We show up to the first house party and it's a bunch of random people in costumes sitting on a couch and watching a movie. That's, that's about the lamest party that there is. It's less party and more, more kickback, right? Y'all at least got some free weed? Cause I don't know where to buy it cause I'm party demon, whoa! This is good shit. <laughs> I lead the way into the kitchen as I knew the host of this event. 
only to see a loose arrangement of a few people. The host of the party was there with some of her friends. The other people were a nice guy that I will dub as middle school nice guy, as I later found out that he was a middle school teacher, which for some reason made him think that he was superior to us lowly service industry workers and his friend. I mean, it does require a degree. It doesn't get paid that much better, so I don't know how far you should be looking down your nose. Really, just probably don't compare jobs at all. If your job is who you are, this is the only trait of, of your personality that you have, then it's honestly just sad. Although, I don't think that he necessarily presented that information up front because OP said that he found out a little bit later. So he's not like, hi, I'm a, I'm a middle school teacher. What do you do? Oh, you work at McDonald's. Psh. Oh, I, I'm better than you. There was some reading between the lines, a little bit of hanging out that had to be done in order to suss that out. And, and again, it might just be OP's ego trying to preserve itself. Maybe middle school nice guy didn't say a goddamn thing about service industry workers. But I don't want to speculate too much. I, I guess we'll have to see. He was the only person at the party, not in a costume of some sort, as apparently it was beneath him. At least pretend, bro. At least be like, yeah, I I'm in costume as a middle school teacher. I'm in costume as an average dude. I'm in costume as a party demon. Whoa! <laughs> Greatest costume ever! Oh my god! The host and her friends ask about Big Titty Goth Girlfriend, Mai, and Velveeta Beard's costume, and we start to talk about him. Oh, Velveeta Beard came with you guys? Okay, I guess. That wasn't made exceedingly clear. <laughs> but okay, I guess we're rolling with that now. It is at that moment that the ranch crust begins to break from around his hunched form as middle school nice guy turns around from his violent dip eating to see what the commotion was about. <laughs> violent dip eating. God, I love that mental picture. <laughs> and he gives me a smug, what are you supposed to be dressed as kind of look. I don't know how this guy didn't realize that he was eating ranch dip so intensely that it got all over his shirt and hands and even his fucking neck. But apparently, he didn't. His neck, bro? Is he just sticking both hands in the dip? That's unsanitary. What, <laughs> what are you doing out here? Sheesh! Oh, that's a... That's ridiculous, <laughs> but apparently, yeah, he can't afford dinner on a, a, a middle school teacher's salary or something like that. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Middle school nice guy just says, uh, so what are you? And OP says, I'm a character from Kingdom Hearts. Uh, have you ever played the games? Whoa. Middle school nice guy scoffs. <laughs> no, I don't even know what that is. Video games are for children. You know this dude plays video games in his spare time. Or or he really like legitimately doesn't. He gives up like one of the purest joys in life just so he can feel like a bigger man. He's like, yeah, I've never played a video game. Well, Maybe you should try it. Like, really, you're not fooling anybody. You're a bald, fat, pudgy dude. Like, you look like you play video games, okay? <laughs> the fact that you're walking around touting that you supposedly don't play video games, nobody's believing that anyways. <laughs> but OP just says, uh, They're pretty fun video games, man. You should check them out. I mean, Kingdom Hearts is, is fucking legit. I do want to play them. Only problem is, I think they're like a cloud service thing on Switch, and uh, Lord knows I ain't paying money for a cloud-based game. Ew! <laughs> Maybe I'll go on the internet and pirate them or something like that. If I ever find some time to kill, which I, I just, I don't have time to play any video games these days. Velveeta Beard says, Video games aren't just for children. <laughs> I play them. Devil May Cry 4 is possibly one of the greatest video games of all time. It is pretty legit, though. 
Velveeta Beer, I, I get you. I'll back you up on that one. <laughs> you can rack up style points for killing enemies in cool ways. There's these YouTubers that play, and they get like 10 million style points on a run. I wonder if I have Devil May Cry 4. I wonder if people will watch me get tens of style points on a run. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm not very stylish. I just wanted to play the games, okay? <laughs> you don't have to be amazing at the game to enjoy it, is my point. Middle school nice guy just ignores us completely and cranes his ranch-encrusted head over the big titty goth girlfriend, the host, and her friend. Middle school nice guy says, <laughs> Have you ever heard of this bullshit? <laughs> I mean, look at these guys. At least this one nerd is Rick. <laughs> You trying to rip on people in costume to people in costume? Something tells me this ain't gonna work out how you think it's gonna work out. <laughs> how have we not met this guy yet? He's like the most insufferable person in the story thus far. I haven't really felt the urge to, to punch any- uh, Well, I felt the urge to punch Velveeta Beard when he went uh, all sneaky fingers on that sleeping girl. But aside from that one event- yeah, I think I want to punch middle school nice guy more than basically anybody else in this story. Big Titty Goth Girlfriend defends video games and says, I actually like Kingdom Hearts too. I grew up playing the video games and Velveeta does make a good rig. <laughs> yeah, go to bat. It's all of us cheese nerds against that fucking cheese nerd. We're all cheese nerds, but he's outnumbered. <laughs> uh, so there you go. Rip and tear intensifies. I want to play some Doom. More than Devil May Cry. More than Bayonetta. Yeah. Rip and tear. <laughs> Middle school nice guy says, Halloween is just for girls to dress up in slutty costumes. <laughs> to attract guys like me. <laughs> No self-respecting man would wear a Halloween costume. Oh my god. Ugh. Are you kidding? <laughs> you think you're a high-value male? You're a balding middle school teacher. <laughs> uh, I hate to tell you, okay? You could be balding or a middle school teacher or down to earth. Any of these things, you know, just, just pick one and you won't be completely insufferable. But this guy really wants to tout how great he is to everybody around him. Nobody's buying it, dude. <laughs> Go stand in the corner. Stop it. OP says, my guy, your friend is in a costume right over there getting a drink. <laughs> oh, called out. Therefore, you are wearing a costume through the transitive property. Because your friend's wearing a costume. Boom. Got him. <laughs> Middle school nice guy says, Ah, whatever. This guy's costume isn't even that good, is it? And why would an adult even dress up? <laughs> I bet he didn't go to college. It is a dishwasher or some shit. That probably cost his whole paycheck. I'm an educator. I shape young minds. <laughs> My only response to I shape young minds would have been, how terrifying, and, and then you walk away. Just disengage, because you're never gonna get over this guy's ego. He's constantly just gonna flaunt how great he is because of his fantastic college degree. Like, bro, you could have gone to college for, for engineering, anything else, really, and made more money. <laughs> but you chose teaching? Why? You want to hear another working theory of mine? Because he's a fucking groomer. That's why. He's looking for his middle school lolly girlfriend right now as we speak. Ah, oh, I hope he dies. <laughs> but yeah, working theory, like I said. Big Titty Goth Girlfriend says, His costume's pretty good considering he made it by himself. Middle school nice guy? <laughs> yeah, probably because he couldn't afford to just buy it. <laughs> I know I'm being an asshole. You're liking it, though. All girls like assholes. <sighs> yeah, that's why rimming is so big with the kids these days. A little bit of that analingus. Go ahead, try it out. It's good for you. <laughs> 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 oh, that's not what you were talking about. Okay. 
Never mind. Wind it back a little bit. Dude is out here flexing like, oh, I make 28K a year. It's like, yeah, well, that dude makes 25K. You really think you're on a different rung of the ladder making $3,000 more a year? <laughs> Come on. I get a couple extra hundred bucks a month. I'm a big baller. <laughs> uh, you need to pump the fucking brakes, bro. <laughs> he really does have nothing else going on in his life. I'd like to feel bad, but yeah, he is just a miserable human being. Somebody put him out of his mercy, please. Big Titty Goth Girlfriend says, No, I'm not into that. Nobody is. <laughs> I have never actually heard someone say the all girls like assholes line IRL, but it happened with this guy. I have heard it IRL, unfortunately, but... <laughs> It does always turn out exactly how, how you think it's going to turn out. Dude's like, no more this Mr. Nice Guy. And everybody's like, okay, then no more maidens. <laughs> you don't have to be a, a jerk. You don't have to be a nice guy. Just be a normal human being. Act like you would normally act. Unless you would normally act like this guy. Okay, everybody but this guy. Act like you would normally act. <laughs> <laughs> now, readers, I grew up in a pretty conservative area where people would get called the F-slur for not dressing in normal clothing. Think like only jeans and flannels and sports team jackets. God, that sounds miserable. I don't want any part of that. Let me dress how I want to dress. Oh, I dress in flannels and jeans and sports team jacket. Okay, never mind then. Jeans and t-shirts, you got a problem with that? We could fight right now. I wonder what is so not normal about Party Demon's mode of dress. I mean, I do recall from the cast list that he has like a mohawk and stuff like that. I guess the town ain't that conservative if you, if you could walk around with a mohawk and not be like ostracized, right? We never established what part of the country this is, but I don't know. I don't think there are that many places that are that conservative, but again... Maybe that's just outside my frame of reference. I mean, I grew up in California, for God's sake. <laughs> Basically, anything goes. Everybody there is too self-absorbed to, to really pay attention to what anybody else is doing. Anyways, I've gotten into fights over this growing up, to the point that I had a tendency to get irrationally angry when people did this type of thing to me or my friends at the time of this story. Irrational anger is not a good thing, although in this case... The anger does seem pretty rational to me. Like, this dude deserves to get his ass kicked. Kick his teeth in. Teach him a lesson. Betty ain't gonna walk around flexing his, his 3K extra a year anymore, looking down the nose for his little fucking four-year degree. <laughs> like I said, the, the best comeback that you could have done is, you know, he's like, I shape young minds, and you're just like, that. I'm mortified. Please stop doing that. And you walk away. <laughs> Just leave him to stew. But, you know, failing that, I, I guess beating the shit out of him could work too. <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm for it. I'm not saying I'm against it either. I'm gonna sit on this fence quite comfortably. So that's not to say that I'm super tough and can beat anyone in a fight. I don't really know much about fighting and... I've lost my fair share of fights being dumb and getting overly angry about this type of thing. Well, at least you can admit to that, OP. High five, up top. Uh, see, the humility is sinking in. God, I love to see this. OP, you're getting better. I did dunk on you a little bit. It seems like the even-numbered parts were doing uh, much better than the odd-numbered parts. So Big Titty Goth Girlfriend was telling middle school nice guy to fuck off, and he was still insulting Velveeta Beard, and I... I was taking off my coat part of the costume as to not ruin it while attempting to fight this guy. As I said in story two, past me would start fights over dumb stuff like this a lot. I have since stopped. I mean, honestly, I don't think this is all that dumb. <laughs> Dude is trying to dunk on everybody around him to be the biggest man in the room. And yeah, somebody needs to alpha up as it were, and remind him of his place. You're a fucking nobody. You're a bald middle school teacher, and I'm about to fucking lay you out. And then, next party he goes to, you think this is gonna happen? 
it's not. Also, yeah, you, you're definitely going to win this fight, so <laughs> don't worry about that part. Unless he pulls out some, like, Brazilian jiu-jitsu you didn't know he had. I guess you can never really tell if you're going to win a fight, but on paper, just, just looking at our combatants, yeah, I got my money on OP. That's fine. <laughs> it was at that moment that Divine Providence intervened on behalf of both I and Middle School Nice Guy. Middle School Nice Guy's friend saw what was going on and stepped in with a quick, I think you're too messed up, bro, directed at both Middle School Nice Guy and I. Middle School Nice Guy protested, but was eventually wrangled to the other side of the kitchen by his friend. I was surprisingly wrangled by Velveeta Beard with a barrage of, uh, Don't sweat it! Don't get in a fight! He's not worth it! All said in a Rick voice while burping. <laughs> I'm boxing ring Rick! <laughs> uh, admittedly, it worked, and I realized how dumb it was to try and fight some guy over him insulting my Halloween costume. Okay, but he's not really just insulting the Halloween costume, is he? He's insulting you as a person. He's insulting your, your way of life. He's insulting everybody around him. And if nobody else is going to step up and put this guy in his place, I, I could see myself doing it. I don't think that this is a dumb thing to get in a fight over. But then again, I have also been in a lot of dumb fights. I have also uh, lost my fair share of fight. That's why I get a little punch drunk sometimes. I can't make my words come out properly all the time. Slurring my speech just a little bit because I've been hitting the head a few too many times. <laughs> but this guy, yeah, it might be worth a punch to the head. We're handing out life lessons. Trick or treat, what'd you get me? <laughs> a lesson that you'll never forget, all right? At the very least, you could like try and egg him on. You know what I mean? Start talking that, that crap right back at him. Make him try to swing on you. Uh, and then it's self-defense, right? Hey, big brain time. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm big enough to the point where nobody ever really tries to swing on me. <laughs> but just make him think that he could, you know? Tell him that he gets the first punch for free. And by that, <laughs> you really mean like you could get this lawsuit for free. You go to jail instead of me, for free. <laughs> uh, so let's get into the next part, I suppose. Not really sure why it's uh, in two parts, because it doesn't seem like 45,000 characters to me, but if OP says it is, then, then I guess, whatever. If it makes you feel better, then that is what it is. So let's get into it and see how it goes right now. Velveeta Beard 4, part 2. Yeah, I I'm still with it. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. There's no part 3, right? 4-3 four, four, and 4-4? Four, four? Because I, I can't fit that in this video. This is already running a little bit long. But alright, Velveeta Beard isn't very beardy in this one. It's mainly sociopath and ginger potato being creepy. If you want Velveeta Beard creepy only vibes, then skip to episode 5. You know I can't do that, friend. You know that I'm contractually obligated to read all of these in order, don't you, friend? Uh, if you missed the last part, for some fucking reason, it's in the same video. What's wrong with you? <laughs> the TLDR is... We go to a different Halloween party. A guy tells me he's a sociopath and beats someone up for some reason. And then there's a different beard and he acts creepy. Oh, it's a TLDR not for the last part, but for this one. Okay, good. So if you want to skip this part, I guess. I'm not going to, uh, but whatever. <laughs> TLDR usually comes at the ends, but, but you do you. Like I said, it's your story. I'm just here, taking the ride, I guess. Previous episodes, yes indeed, still in the description. Uh, same old cast, but here are the new characters. Sociopath! A self-described sociopath that I met at a party. Bro, we are gonna have an edgelord fight on our hands right now. Sociopath versus party demon. Whoa! Everybody look out! <laughs> Just a really creepy, weird guy that for some reason wanted to tell me of his various edgy sociopath ways. Kind of like OP wants to tell me about his various edgy uh, drunkard ways. But yeah, I guess sociopath is, is more cringy than party demon. Actually, it, it's too close to call. I can't, <laughs> I can't make that call. What do you think, comments? 
sociopath or party demon? Which which is a more cringe title to give yourself? <laughs> this dude was about five foot one with a crust stash. I don't really remember too much about his appearance, but I do remember the barrage of weird things that he said to me. Ginger Potato is an orange-haired, potato-shaped man, six foot one, and a milady seeking neckbeard that I met. He had a big, fluffy tuft of hair on top of his head with everything else shaved. I only had one interaction with him, but it was a bad one. Why would you cut your hair like that? What's going on? <laughs> you little pumpkin pie hair cutted freak. Uh, but okay, Ginger Potato off the bat doesn't seem as bad as Sociopath, but I guess we'll have to see how bad the interaction is, right? Let's continue this from where part one left off. It was after realizing how dumb it was to try and fight someone over insulting a Halloween costume that I thought it best that we just leave the previous party instead of being around middle school nice guy any longer. You let him win, bro. <laughs> Don't let him win. Maybe that is my ego speaking. I, I wouldn't have it that way, though. <laughs> I couldn't let it be like that. Our beardly band of Halloween adventurers headed back to Big Titty Goth Girlfriend's house to change as the next party was prom-themed for some reason. That is fucking weird. Miss me with that, bro. You think I'm doing a costume change in the middle of the night? You let me come in my Halloween costume or I'm not coming. I don't care. I got unfinished business with middle school nice guy anyways. But yes, we all changed into more formal attire, and we were off to pick up Soybeard, who was doing some hipster thing until now. Leave Soybeard alone. He's a nice guy, isn't he? And I mean that in the best way possible. He's like a legitimately good guy, uh, from what I could tell. At least most of the time. I mean, people have made mistakes in this saga. Everybody's made mistakes in this saga, but th that's kind of how life is. We can move on from those things, can we not? I mean, Velveeta Beard can't. Remember the sneaky fingers? Remember the sleeping girl? Uh, mm, yeah, he needs to uh, get some karma for that one. Velveeta Beard was wearing a red suit with a black shirt and a red tie. He'd been watching an anime about vampires for the past week, and he told us that he bought the suit to look like one of the characters. <laughs> Where's Velveeta Beard getting all this expendable income from? He works at a fucking sandwich shop and he can afford costume changes? <laughs> this seems ridiculous to me, bro. Stop spending your money on suits and lab coats! <laughs> you have a problem! I forget what anime it was, but he told us all about it on our way to this party. Soybeard was wearing one of those hipster, everything is knitted and costs a disgusting amount of money suits. See, Soybeard hasn't even dunked on anybody once. It's pretty clear that he's making more money than everybody else here. He doesn't work in a service industry job, but unlike middle school nice guy, he doesn't feel the need to rub anybody's nose in it. I like Soybeard, honestly. <laughs> he seems like a cool dude. I have said from the first episode that him and I could probably kick it. Velveeta Beard says, hey Guys, I look pretty suave. The suit looks almost exactly like whatever vampire anime character it was. Yeah, except that you're, you're, you're fat and weird. <laughs> the one caveat. Oh, that's where they got me. I can't change what is contained within the suit. But the suit itself, you're right. It looks completely on point. <laughs> OP. Are you going as a vampire? <laughs> that would be cool, Velveeta. No, but girls will be all over me. <laughs> girls love men in suits, <laughs> and mine is the best out of all of ours. Yeah, that's all it takes. You put on a nice suit and, and walk down the street, and you just hear the sound of sopping wet panties hitting the ground as you walk past. I know. I've spent $6,000 on a suit before, and it works every time. Totally not a waste of money. <laughs> uh, spend your money on something better. A, a gym membership, how about? Uh, that's what I would advocate. Work on what's in the suit. How about that? Soybeard says, anyone could get that suit. 
You just bought all the pieces at H&M. No one will be wearing anything similar to mine. <laughs> they probably won't even know where I got it. Yeah, because it's so obscure, hipster beard. <laughs> uh, I see what's going on here. I guess that's the first line that we've really heard Soybeard say. And yeah, it is fairly insufferable. <laughs> I take back everything I said. Velveeta, uh, whatever. I look like anime vampire character. Soybeard, you don't look exactly like him. I watched that anime with you. Velveeta, we'll see who gets a girl at this party then. <laughs> it's gonna be me. Yeah, let's make it a competition. That's a healthy foundation for a relationship, isn't it? You guys are so fucking weird. <laughs> uh, oh, forever maidenless, and for good reason. <laughs> OP jumps in and says, Uh, Soybeard, don't you have a girlfriend already? Soybeard? Yeah, but I can still get girls better than Velveeta Beard. Again, <laughs> solid foundation for a relationship, okay. It confirmed he's a piece of trash. This is the point where we can't kick it any longer because you have no respect for your significant other. Ugh, shameful. Big Titty Goth Girlfriend says, Guys, chill the fuck out. It's just a prom-themed Halloween party, which seems really weird. I I'm still questioning that a whole heck of a lot, but okay, you have it your way. Velveeta Beard and Soy Beard always seem to be in some sort of weird competition over who was more attractive to girls. Why does it have to be either one? Neither of you are attractive to girls. Both of you will die alone. <laughs> they were friends when talking about anime or Magic the Gathering, but they seemed to hate each other whenever this sort of deal came up. I do remember being like young and coom-brained and, and dunking on my friends in hope of getting the girl, but that's really not the way to go about it. Bros before hoes is like a, a big thing, just not in the way that most people mean it. Such as, if you're cheating on your girlfriend, I I'ma let your girlfriend know, out of respect for her and, and to keep you honest. That's not hoes before bros, uh, that's putting being a decent human being over this false ass friendship. <laughs> You expect me to just hold on to your dirty secrets? No, dude. I can't do it. That ain't me. <laughs> if you can't respect her, somebody needs to. That's all I'm saying. So this party was like a 30-minute drive to get to, and in a horrible unnamed town next to a factory straight out of Silent Hill. Sounds like a ball. <laughs> Welcome to Paper Street, guys. We pull up next to the Nightmare Factory and see the house. It's a relatively normal house for this sad middle America state, and I would have never suspected that I would actually find a sociopath and a neckbeard inside, but readers, unfortunately, I do. I mean, it's right next to a nightmare factory. Uh, of course there's a sociopath and a neckbeard inside. <laughs> What'd you think it was full of candy sprinkles? <laughs> this is basic. Let's put two and two together. So, when we enter, we're greeted by a very high school, pre-prom party scene. I make my way to the kitchen, grab a beer, and turn around to see a small man with both of his hands down the front of his shorts. The fuck? <laughs> this is Sociopath. Clad in a tank top and gym shorts, he was the only person at the party not in some sort of fancy outfit. Oh yeah, he's breaking the mold, bro! Watch him go! He greets me with a... <sighs> hey. OP. Hello. Sociopath. <sighs> I'm Host's friend. <sighs> kind of. Uh, I just got out of jail. <sighs> Weird flex, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably not how you want to introduce yourself to normal people out in the real world, okay? That sort of paints you in a bad light, off the bat, immediately. But OP seems to take it in stride and says, Oh, shit. What were you in jail for, sociopath? 
I'm a sociopath. <laughs> Some guy was talking to me, and I got on top of him and beat his head into the ground. <laughs> Bro, I almost killed him. Is this guy not five foot one? <laughs> How big was this dude that you jumped on top of? If a five foot one dude jumps on top of me, it's like wearing a heavy backpack. <laughs> uh, how did any of this go down? I'm pretty sure he's making all this up anyways. Flexing to strangers, telling lies for clout. I don't get it, but okay, continue on. And while he's saying all of this, he's fondling his equipment in his gym shorts right in front of me. Chris Trucker, is that you? <laughs> OP, trying not to glance down and vomit. Why would you even be tempted to glance down? Don't do it! <laughs> uh, what'd he do, though? Like, why'd you beat him up? Sociopath. I just wanted to fuck him up. I have to not do that again. Or I'll go back to prison. I have... Urges, though. Uh, I love the sight of blood. Okay, nice meeting you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Have a beautiful time. Uh, exit. Stage left. <laughs> uh, why would you not be getting the hell out of there at this point? There's no way that this conversation is going to go well, is there? It was over as soon as it started. <laughs> See you later, fella. OP just says, ha ha. I hope you don't do something to send you back to prison, man. <laughs> Big Titty Goth Girlfriend had been listening to this entire conversation and saved me from talking to this guy more with, uh, babe, there's some cute pets upstairs and you gotta meet them. Yeah, I'll take it. Thanks for throwing me down a lifeline. Really, you should have just walked away. Screw the social contract. Dude is being weird as hell. Not obeying the social contract. And so guess what? I ain't gonna do it either. Heavens to Murgatroyd. I'm out of here. <laughs> uh, nobody remembers that shit. That's a real deep cut. <laughs> Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and I go upstairs. And I see a huge cage with the host's rats in it. She tells me that they're old so we can't take them out. I had a lot of animals growing up, and stressing out animals isn't something that I do, so I just look at them, sleeping, and we talk about how smart rats are. God, they are so smart, aren't they? Beautiful little creatures. I love them so much. And if the host has rats, I, I might actually put on a collared shirt to come and hang out with your rats. <laughs> I don't want to hang out with people at the party, but the rats, yeah, we could kick it for a bit. It's at this point that a girl that's friends with Festival Girl shows up. I'll call her the Dab Fairy, for she toted a dab rig with her. I mean, that's cool, but also, like, get a personality again. <laughs> Thanks for the dabs, now get the fuck out of here, because you're uninteresting. <laughs> you're going to kill my whole buzz by accidentally talking to me after I take the dab. <laughs> it seems pretty cold, but I'm just being honest. I'm just being for reals. The party was pretty pleasant, aside from sociopath and his penis fondling ways. What? Why didn't anybody say anything about it? <laughs> We're just letting this guy do whatever he wants. This five foot one little gremlin walking around the party with his hands wrapped around his, his penis. Or not his hands. Probably not even his hands. Probably just like two two fingers wrapped around his penis. <laughs> so we decided to leave the rats be and rejoin the party for some prom themed Halloween vibes, leaving the dab fairy and the host behind. Why did we introduce the dab fairy at all? <laughs> okay. In the room next to the pet room, there's a man projecting lights onto a wall as a sort of prom picture backdrop and spinning records. There was also a keg and a large potato-shaped man standing next to it. Why was he alone at a house party? 
because Ginger Potato here was a neckbeard looking to pick up a prob date. He saunters over with confidence, stomach, and the vibes of Zap Brannigan saying guacamole all wrong. He immediately grabs Big Titty Goth Girlfriend by the waist and pulls her close. All right, now we fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think you are? You don't know that woman, you keep her hands off her. Especially if it's my woman. Break his hand! It's the only way that he'll learn! It is like this, they only learn through pain. You gotta hurt him, OP. You gotta hurt him! <laughs> Ginger Potato. Hey, you're a cutie! Big Titty Goth Girlfriend shoves him away and says, What the fuck? Why would you grab me? Well, I guess OP's not gonna step in. It's up to Big Titty Goth Girlfriend to defend herself, which you know she's more than capable of, but if that's my lady, you doing that shit? Uh-uh. Uh-uh! <laughs> like I said, now we gotta fight. Ginger Potato says, hey, Sorry, I just know the ladies like dominant men. Why does everybody seem to have this impression? How are we running into so many neckbeards in just one night? <laughs> it's really weird. Big Titty Goth Girlfriend says, Ladies don't fucking like being grabbed by randos. Yeah, get out of here, sloth! Hey, you guys! <laughs> hey, you guys! Finally, OP decides to step in now that the situation's essentially handled, and he says, Whoa! Don't touch my girlfriend, or we're gonna have a problem, whoa! This should be, like, instinct. This should be completely reactive at this point. But God bless you for trying, I guess, OP. <laughs> nice try! It's not too late, I swear! Ginger Potato says, You know, I once fucked a bride on her wedding day. <laughs> uh... How am I even supposed to respond to that? Again, weird flex, but okay. Who asked? Where are the askers? Ain't nobody asking. Where are the askers, my friend? <laughs> OP, what? <laughs> Why are you telling us this? <laughs> no, for real. He's having this whole conversation in his head, and then he just drops a line in the middle like we're supposed to all pick up and understand what the fuck is going on. <laughs> Ginger Potato says, hey, Ladies can't resist me, even the ones with boyfriends. Ah. Yeah, look at you. Everybody loves fucking Sloth from the Goonies. That's... <laughs> <laughs> That's the only face that I can see when I picture Ginger Potato. Uh, Big Titty Goth Girlfriend says, Oh yeah, what woman could resist a potato-bodied grabby man-child? Ginger Potato, just wait until I get you alone tonight. Okay, punch him. Punch him? He just threatened to rape your lady, bro. You just gonna let that slide? God, I'm so tired of spineless OPs, man. I think that's the main reason that neckbeards get turned into neckbeards, is because nobody's there to, like, be the wall, to teach them that that is not socially acceptable. At least swing on him. Is he bigger than you? Doesn't matter, bro. You gotta be down for your shit, right? Are you not? <laughs> You're just like, hmm, please, please don't say about that about my girlfriend. If you say that again, we're, we're, we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> he, he just said it! He's up here pushing the envelope and you're just like, eh, it's not very nice what you said. <laughs> uh, uh, where's your dick, bro? Grab your balls! It's time. It is beyond time. Okay, you didn't want to punch uh, middle school beard in the first part. I, I kind of get it. But this dude? This dude needs a punching. A real good punching! Uh, so I was both grossed out and enraged at this comment, but before this unpleasant interaction with this potato man could go on, the dab fairy reappeared with her dab rig. Ginger Potato then realized that another milady was in the room. 
Yeah, that shit doesn't really matter to me. I, I still have to punch you for what you said. <laughs> Another milady enters? Okay, I guess she's watching this fucking happen. You think the dab fairy's gonna save you? Never. <laughs> Ginger Potato says, Wait, is that a dab rig? I could totally outsmoke all these fucking guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm so impressed that you could take dabs for free. How about you bring your own shatter and then, and then I might consider being a little more impressed. But you didn't, did you? You're just like, I want to smoke as much free shit as possible. <laughs> Can we do that? No. What makes you think I'm interested in interacting with you on any level? Dab Fairy says, we can all smoke if you want. Weed isn't a competition, though. Oh my god, she's such a pure soul. I talked trash about her a little bit earlier, but that one line, I'm like, she's cool, man. You're right, weed isn't a competition. Drinking is also not a competition, party demon. I like having a low tolerance. I drink one bottle of soju, I'm off my ass. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, you know, do what you enjoy and chill out with it. Don't turn it into something it's not. I like you, Dab Fairy. Up top, high five. We could kick it. But I'm bringing the shatter, because I'm not a user. <laughs> I don't think I could even dab. It's been years since I smoked weed. <laughs> My brain will go into orbit. How about we just start with something uh, a little bit easier? <laughs> uh, uh, oh... Ginger Potato stands strong on his hill of stupid and says, These guys are wusses compared to me. I'll show you girls how much a real man can smoke. <laughs> and then I'll get with both of you. I'm surprised OP hasn't punched him yet, honestly. <laughs> uh, what world do you live in? What, what planet is this? Then all of a sudden, you smoke up all this girl's wax, and you're like, yeah, now we totally bang it out. Like, she's already being nice to you by, by sharing her goods. It, and you want to take that even further and be like, oh, because she's nice and shares her weed, she'll totally bang me? No, bro. <laughs> you're not interesting at all. Little potato person. That's what it be. OP tries to grab his balls back and, and pushes against Ginger Potato, saying, Why do you think grabbing girls and insulting people is going to get anyone to like you? Uh, that's a pretty fair point, but yeah. Ma don't even have this conversation, really. Just punch him. Remember all that uh, unbridled anger he had in the last episode? Where did that go? This dude's like literally insulting your lady, telling you to your face that he's going to bang your lady and you haven't swung on him? <laughs> Come on, man. Come on! Ginger Potato says, Um, it's called negging. <laughs> Not something that someone like you would understand. It's so basic. So basic. It might have worked a decade ago. Now all these idiot pickup artists are, are finally picking up on, on negging. They're like, yeah, this seems to really work. Just give me money and I can make you understand how it is that it works. <laughs> OP says, no one likes negging. Has this ever worked for you? Ginger Potato. Obviously, you're just trying to delay taking a dab. Because you know I could smoke more than you. And you guys don't want to be embarrassed in front of these ladies. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Not because it's a stupid competition to have. <laughs> <laughs> You've already embarrassed yourself simply by suggesting the competition. Simply by insisting that this is going to make you cooler than everybody else. You, you dumb as hell. Now, I can't stress this enough. At this point in my life, drinking or smoking weed more than other people is not a cool feat. But at the time, I thought it was the height of coolness. So I accepted Ginger Potato's challenge. Uh, now, it's not something that I could sign off on, you know? I just spent my whole time saying this isn't the way that it's supposed to go, especially when it's somebody else's wax that you're smoking. But if the Dab Fairy has agreed to it, then yeah, I hope that Ginger Potato gets absolutely smoked. Like, quite literally. Pun not intended. <laughs> 
I hope that you, you put him under the table so he can't even walk. He just passes out. I had never taken a dab at that time, and I thought that it wouldn't be that intense, but I was so wrong. Yeah, dude, that is that is highly concentrated, okay? <laughs> uh, that is some, some wild shit. Honestly, I swore off dabs for a while. I didn't want to do it anymore because it ruined my body for, like, just regular smoking. I'd smoke a bowl and be like, yeah, I, I don't feel that much from it. <laughs> dabs are, are so wild. I also question how you could truly call yourself the party demon. Whoa! If you'd never taken a dab. But okay, we're not dab shaming over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. There's some stuff people haven't experienced, you know. Uh, we'll roll with the punches. But you are going to earn your party demon title tonight, right? You're not going to lose, right? After he insulted your girlfriend, you, you better push through the fucking pain. Ginger Potato grabbed the dab rig and a large amount of whatever magic weed potion goes with it. Weed potion? It's like wax, bro. It's, a, it's not a liquid at all. <laughs> And he takes his dab. I do the same with the same amount as Ginger Potato without realizing what had just happened to him. Velveeta Beard, Soy Beard, Big Titty Goth Girlfriend, and the Dab Fairy all followed suit but used significantly less weed extract. <laughs> yeah, it's not a wise idea. This is not something that you want to flex about, okay? Do you want to enjoy the rest of your night? Or do you want to just go to the moon and fall asleep somewhere? There is no right answer. I'm just, I'm legitimately asking. Ginger Potato was jettisoned into space. So far above the realms of what a potato should ever know. <laughs> and I was boarding my own personal rocket. Ginger Potato could no longer speak at this point. As the dab apparently reverted him to his original earthen form <laughs> at least that ended his negging i was also having a shitty time yeah why i don't understand man these fucking kids you know <laughs> i can't sign off on any of this but if it happened it happens it is what it is ginger potato eventually struggles his way out of the room and a few minutes afterwards, I returned to Earth, somewhat. Apparently, he immediately left the party and drove home. <laughs> that means you win, OP! Make sure to rub it in his face if you see him again. I don't blame him. The dab was a bad time. I don't even know how he drove in the state that he was in. I mean, was the wax that the dab fairy carried around, like, dirty or something like that? Because I've done some, like, pretty big dabs, but then again, I kind of built myself up to it <laughs> if it's the first time taking a dab and you take a huge one yeah you're gonna be sort of fucked but i am glad that even if op lost uh so did ginger potato that's uh, a little bit of catharsis for me at the very least now i was sure that the night was cursed so i asked big titty goth girlfriend if she would take us home she was happy to stop interacting with random beards and we all left yeah that seems like a really weird party bro <laughs> Overall, really strange, bad night. I never met Ginger Potato, Sociopath, or Middle School Nice Guy again. Neither Velveeta Beard or Soy Beard even tried to talk to a girl that night, despite being so sure that the girls would be all over them because of their fancy suits. Yeah, like I said, it, it's not the suit that's doing the work. Try being an interesting person, developing a personality, and then... Maybe. Just maybe. <laughs> Next episode, Velveeta Beard attends the local Ren Fair and tells us of how he could have totally gotten a girlfriend in the Middle Ages. <laughs> uh, did you have a dowry? I don't think Velveeta Beard could have afforded a dowry, okay? You can definitely tell that this took place on Halloween because all, all the freaks come out during Halloween. I'm pretty sure that's how it works, isn't it? <laughs> you meet three beards in a row at two different parties like it's pretty uncanny although uh, op's been pretty open that yeah his town has a lot of beards in it i guess 
But overall, it was a pretty good ride, you know. I dunked on OP a couple of times, but compared to parts one and three, this is even better than part two, I would say. We actually got beard interactions, and I feel so fucking blessed. Thank you so much, OP, for going back and rewriting some parts, giving us a bit more of that delicious beard cringe. I, I truly do appreciate it. I, I can tell that you're taking the criticisms on board, so I'll try not to be as hard on you in the future. <laughs> do you like being called Party Demon Whoa? Because, yeah, you, you got your own voice. I think that's the highest honor that I can bestow. <laughs> If I were a viking and raided and took a girl home from a raid to be my wife, it would have been normal, right? <laughs> no, 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 hell no, no. Velveeta Beard 5. Velveeta Beard gets yelled at by an old woman. And we go to the Renaissance Fair. <laughs> <laughs> I like how it's just the TLDR, but it's basically the title. That's beautiful. The title is a bit unwieldy, but I ain't gonna judge you too much for that. You know what you're getting when you open up the story and sit down for some Velveeta beard, don't you? At least I do, I think. Anyways, <laughs> I'm back with even more Velveeta based beard cringe. Welcome back, user frat goth, aka Party Demon. Whoa! <laughs> Get ready, as we go to the Renaissance Fair in this episode, and Velveeta Beard tells us all of how he could get a milady if it were the Middle Ages. <laughs> yeah, I guess. If you have the proper dowry, I suppose. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I love how they lust for a, a simpler time. It's like, bro, you wouldn't survive without the internet, honestly. You would have been eight years old, walked too close behind a horse, got kicked in the head, dead. <laughs> you wouldn't have made it to that point, Velveeta Beard. Uh, yes, our previous episodes are down in the description. In a playlist, we've got one, two, three, and four. Four had two parts, so that is quite a beefy one. This one, perhaps not as beefy, but I guess we shall see. Same previous cast, but yeah, here are some new characters. Old woman downstairs. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to call her. She's just the old woman downstairs. A mean old woman who made great pies and hated drug use. See, but you could enjoy the pies so much more. You should have just gave her a spleef. Like, here, smoke this cone and then try one of your pies and you're, you're going to go to space. <laughs> Velveeta Beard got screamed at by this woman on multiple occasions. She was pretty gross. <laughs> and smelled horribly of boiled canned vegetables. Oh, come on. That's just an old person smell. Leave her alone. <laughs> uh, yeah, she has to boil up some canned vegetables. Why don't you cook her a nice meal, OP? Then again, if she's going to judge me for coming over and cooking for her high, I'm probably not going to do it. <laughs> I just have a, a soft spot for old people, okay? I do indeed loves them, yes. <laughs> They're the reason that we're all here today. Let's keep that in mind. We've also got Montessori teacher. <laughs> I wonder what his job is. <laughs> Husband of the banker who taught at a Montessori school. Yeah, good naming convention. <laughs> Pretty nice guy who was really into VR technology and smoking weed. Yeah, hell yeah. You think he let those kids light up at the Montessori school? It's like, okay, what do you want to study? Herbology? <laughs> he had a really nice Australian shepherd and would have bonfires at this house that Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and I would go to sometimes. All right, to me, it seems like a non sequitur, but I'm going to wait for it to become relevant in the story, okay? I've kind of learned how this goes. We're going to hold on to our hats and just expect the worst and hope for the best, I guess. Uh, the banker is the wife of Montessori teacher, if you didn't put that one together, <laughs> who worked at a local credit union and was really knowledgeable about banking in general. It's a useless skill. Useless skill, bro. <laughs> What are you going to do? Calculate my compound interest? Fuck out of here. 
<laughs> she was friends with Big Titty Goth Girlfriend, which is how I met both her and Montessori Teacher. She was also great at making homemade pasta. Talking to her about banking is the reason why I changed my bank account from a large bank to one at a credit union. Well, I could have told you that. I bank at a fucking credit union. <laughs> I would highly recommend it if there is a local credit union near you. Or if you're in the military, Navy Federal, it serves, not the one I currently use. But yes, credit unions are infinitely better than, like, Bank of America or some crap like that. Forget about it. I don't want nothing like that. The banker and Montessori teacher aren't featured too much in this story, but they were the reason that we could all go to the Renaissance Fair, so I thought it would be good to include them. This was the only and last time that either one of them hung out with Velveeta Beard. Okay, but if they don't feature that much in the story, why do we got to hear about their dog and, like, cooking pasta and all this shit? <laughs> I guess it's good to include, but I don't know if I'm going to sign off on that 100%. You could have at least included a picture of the dog if we got to talk about the fucking dog, right? <laughs> dog is not featured in story at all. I just wanted to let you know that they had one. I cool. <laughs> <laughs> it also seems like uh, Big Titty Goth Girlfriend is out here introducing OP to all types of people. Did it ever happen in reverse? Did OP introduce Big Titty Goth Girlfriend to anyone? She seems like a social butterfly. He seems sort of like a social parasite, right? <laughs> Which is something that I've stuck with throughout this series of events. But okay, I'm not going to start coming too hard quite yet. We just gotta reel it back in, wind it back, and everything's gonna be fine, I'm sure. So it was around one and a half years into knowing Velveeta Beard that this unfortunate event would eventually reveal his secret love of my girlfriend. Bruh, I think I called that in fucking episode one. <laughs> this is supposed to be the big reveal? <laughs> uh, come on, man. What the fuck? How this event revealed his secret love will be much more apparent in the final story. Oh yeah, that's how you keep him coming back for more, isn't it? <laughs> Big Titty Goth Girlfriend's other roommate had moved out. Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and Velveeta Beard found a new place to live. A two-bedroom above what we thought was a nice old lady. Oh no. Don't be fooled. Don't give anybody the benefit of the doubt. Yes, I enjoy old people, okay? But <laughs> I enjoy them at arm's length, honestly. The lady was old, but yeah, she was nowhere near nice. Velveeta Beard had some funny run-ins with this woman scolding him for smoking weed. Whatever, you can't live my life for me, all right? Just be glad I'm not up here doing heroin or something. <laughs> Shooting methamphetamine into my eyeballs. All things considered, weed really ain't that bad, old lady. All right. In hindsight, Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and I should have just gotten a place together and left Velveeta Beard to find his own place. Yeah, I don't know why that didn't happen. Maybe Big Titty Goth Girlfriend does have, like, eyes for Velveeta Beard or something like that. Maybe she just wa didn't want to leave him high and dry. Was OP tied in with the lease? There's a lot of questions that I have about what's going on here. But OP assures us that yes, readers, this woman was awful. She smelled like cooking rotten canned vegetables. Uh, oh, fuck, you got me. <laughs> it was to the point that the foyer that had the doors to the two apartments smelled like that all the time. Was she eating rotten canned vegetables? This is all her social security check could allow? Let me buy you some nice cat food, okay? <laughs> you need to get some supplement. <laughs> <laughs> That's so mean. She would yell at Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and Velveeta Beard constantly for being too loud to the point that Big Titty Goth Girlfriend wouldn't want to leave her room on the third floor just to make sure her footsteps on the old woman's ceiling weren't too loud. She seemed to just want to yell at people constantly. I'm old and I'm unhappy. I don't understand how things work anymore. <laughs> yeah, okay, we get it. 
<laughs> Honestly, when you said that uh, goth girlfriend and Velveeta beard were being too loud, you know what I'm thinking of, right? They're being too loud while Lil P's not around, huh? Right? Banging that headboard against the wall, right? <laughs> Honestly, in my opinion, I got a lot of sympathy for this old woman. It can't be easy to be old. I'm sure maybe I'll find out someday unless I get hit by a bus. <laughs> I already feel it from time to time. We talk about has been hotel and I'm like, I don't like anime. And people are like, hey, grandpa was streaming Minecraft. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> How do you make a sword? <laughs> you have to put the, the sticks on top of this. It's like, I can't remember. Let me tell you about all 8,000 Pokemon. <laughs> uh, anyway, one day the banker texts Big Titty Goth girlfriend and says that Montessori teacher had gotten 10 free Renaissance Fair tickets through some work event and invited us all to go with them. That's pretty lit, honestly. The entrance fee is not the part that you need to worry about at the Ren Fair. It's really like the food and the alcohol and the souvenirs. That's where their money really comes out of, right? Free tickets? It, it seems like a bit of a trap to me. <laughs> but I do love a Ren Fair, I gotta be honest. I still need to tell my legbeard story about the Ren Fair girl who stalked me for every year that I worked there. <laughs> This apparently was a semi-normal thing, as the Pickler, Pie Girl, Big Titty Goth Girlfriend, and I went to the Renaissance Fair with the banker and Montessori teacher the next year. Soybeard didn't want to go because it wasn't cool enough for him, but Velveeta Beard was excited. I mean, if you're looking for Ren Fair to be cool, I think that you're kind of missing the point, right? <laughs> Nobody goes to Ren Fair to try and be cool. Soybeard showing some of his insufferability there. In exchange, we offered to buy them a few drinks and some food at the fair. We all dressed in some sort of medieval costume and we were off. Yes, much better than buying your clothes at the fair. I swear, man, we used to have some people come in and drop like four or five hundred bucks on fair clothes. I'm like, you realize you can't wear these to the grocery store, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is all massively overpriced. Y you realize that, right? But they didn't care. I guess they make it good money. Good for them. Also, good for the person that owned the business that I worked for. I didn't see none of those fucking profits. I'm gonna let you know right now. <laughs> so I stopped working there. <laughs> As the events of the day began to unfold, Velveeta Beard suggested that we get fucked up on mead like Vikings. Ah. And of course, OP being the party demon, whoa, never one to refuse getting messed up. I strutted up to the closest mead hall and ordered a flagon of their finest honeyed brew. Yeah, you gotta pay like $8 for that shit. Honestly, what is the mead hall? As far as I know, it's a tent outside. <laughs> I went to the Irwindale uh, Red Fair and they were pretty big budget. They still didn't have like an actual haul for anything. <laughs> what are you doing? I also got drinks for Montessori teacher and the banker and they said they were going to check out the fair. Luckily, they left the mead area before Velveeta Beard began a conversation of the beardly variety. Oh, here we go. Stretch your spine out. Everything's gonna be fine, okay? <laughs> Velveeta. Guys, if it were back in the Middle Ages, I probably would have no problem getting a girlfriend. Yes, you would, Velveeta Beard. <laughs> Uh, the father of this girl would be like, what do you do for a living son? And he'd be like, I work for Jan local sandwich shop. And he'd be like, get out. <laughs> you are nobody and a nothing. Surely you shan't marry my daughter. Unless it's the ugly one. <laughs> OP just says, uh, okay. Why would it be different then though? Big titty goth girlfriend. Shut the fuck up, Velveeta Beard. Even back then, having cheese and spit crusted all over your mouth was gross. No, I think they'd be like, Jesus Christ, that guy can afford cheese. 
<laughs> cheese. We'll go somewhere where there's cheese. <laughs> Let's all be friends with him. Yeah, Vikings don't fit into the Ren Fair thing very well, but it's kind of whatever. Do whatever you want, okay? I saw people dressed up as like mages and shit, so I guess nothing means anything anymore anyways. <laughs> Velveeta. Uh, well, besides that, I mean, it was just easier to get a wife back then. I would have been married already. Yeah, how many goats you got? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how many oxen or head of cattle you have. Oh, zero? Uh, yeah, then you're not getting married. Basically, that's how it goes. OP? Was it? I thought Viking society was matriarchal unless they were, like, out on raids. Velveeta? Yeah, uh, but I could have raided and taken a lady for my own. Uh... <laughs> Not a great look. I don't think that counts as uh, a marriage. She's never going to consent to that. Although we did learn from Velveeta Beard's sneaky fingers episode that consent doesn't seem to matter all that much to him. What a scumbag. <laughs> OP. Uh, like a slave? Velveeta. No, she would become my wife. Uh, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Big titty goth girlfriend. Gross, Velveeta Beard. I mean, yeah, it is, but this whole thing's kind of gross, so why not? Keep going, I guess. <laughs> Velveeta Beard says, No, guys, come on. It would be normal back then. None of this is normal. <laughs> Pack it in, dude. I don't think you know what normal is anymore. You're too far over the line. He then gets up and wiggles his way over to the counter. I thought it was to drink more, but it was not. Oh yeah, this is gonna get real creepy real quick. Velveeta Beard says to the girl serving the mead, Uh, hey. Girl. Hi, do you want something else to drink? Velveeta. Yeah, but I gotta ask you a question. Girl. Okay, <laughs> Velveeta. If I were a Viking and raided and took a girl home from a raid to be my wife, it would have been normal, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Hell no, no, no. Uh, she wasn't any part of this conversation. I don't know why you're pulling her into this. Jesus Christ. That is such cringe. <laughs> the girl just says, Um, <laughs> Velveeta. Like, it, it wouldn't have been weird back then. I could have done it, and it would have been normal. <laughs> <laughs> the girl says, I mean, enslaving people was normal back then, but it wasn't a good thing. OP. Velveeta, come on, man. Stop talking about this. <laughs> uh, at this point, I would just disappear. There's many places that I can go to get drinks at Renton Fair, okay? I'm not going to stick around here and watch this dude murder himself. <laughs> uh, I hate it. But OP sticks around, and Velveeta Beard continues insisting. Uh, no, you, you just don't get it. I'm just trying to explain how it would be back then. <laughs> uh, holy Christ, man. I hate everything about this. Please make it stop. <laughs> this line of conversation makes me want to take a toaster bath, okay? I just, <laughs> I just can't. Uh... Ah, uh, Velveeta Beard continues. If you were my slave, I would treat you really well. And because I would be a Viking, I would give you a better life than what you would have had. <laughs> uh, oh, please stop. I can't anymore. <laughs> the girl says, a better life as a slave? <laughs> Big titty goth girlfriend. Leave this woman alone. 
Holy shit, dude. Velveeta. I'm just saying that I treat her well, though. <laughs> uh, oh, spine powdered. <laughs> now I'm a paraplegic. I have to crawl my way out of this mead tent with just my mouth. <laughs> the girl serving the mead was, needless to say, pretty creeped out. She changed bar positions with a big hairy guy dressed up in a pirate outfit, and he shut Velveeta Beard down with an order, drink, or leave. And Velveeta stopped trying to tell people about his medieval slave fantasies. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear about this. Why are you doing this? I can't, bro. I cannot anymore. At least he's got a couple of friends to, like, Try and send him down the normal path, but he just can't seem to help himself, dude. If this man was not currently living in his mother's basement, then he would definitely have a woman chained to a radiator down there. I guarantee! <laughs> so Montessori teacher and the banker came back to meet us as Velveeta's uh, slave wife would be totally normal conversation was ending. <laughs> Timing! <laughs> they didn't say anything, but I think they almost definitely heard some of it, and it is why Velveeta Beard was never invited to anything that they did after this. Yes, a lesson hard learned. Honestly, if I walked in and heard some shit like that, I'd turn right back around. Nope! <laughs> I don't know that guy, I don't want anything to do with this. Eventually, we all left as the fair was ending and returned to Big Titty Goth Girlfriend's house. I didn't want to stop having medieval-themed fun, so I suggested we take some bong rips. Oh yes, madam! Fill up the bong! Uh, thus thy rip, etc. Verily! <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Why is that medieval-themed fun, OP? <laughs> <laughs> you think they got bogs back in the day, or would they be burned as a witch if they took a bong rip? <laughs> the apartment was set up in a way that there was a door to a balcony in the room that we were smoking in, and directly opposite a hallway leading downstairs to the front foyer. The door to the downstairs neighbor's apartment was in this foyer. Wait, I'm trying to visualize this and math it out real quick. I don't know what's going on. But you close, that's what you say, right? <laughs> After smoking, we decided to open the balcony door to air out the room. I am too high, and I tell Big Titty Goth Girlfriend that I need to go upstairs and look at cool crystals or, or something. Jesus Christ, Marie, they're minerals. <laughs> they're rocks, Hank. No, they're minerals. Jesus, Marie. I <laughs> Montessori teacher, the banker, Big Titty Goth Girlfriend, and I leave to go upstairs, and Velveeta Beard stays behind to do whatever it is he does. Probably make a Velveeta-based dish, or even more likely than that, just play with his balls or something like that. <laughs> this, readers, is where a heavenly wind blows in the open balcony door to punish Velveeta for his crimes. The wind blows a violent dragon's breath of weed smoke down the stairs into the foyer. Oh, you guys were pretending to be dragons. That's why it's medieval based or something. I'm really trying to help you out here. <laughs> Maybe you can help me out in return. Please, thank you. This seeped into the downstairs apartment. It was as if the gods and goddesses had seen Velveeta Beard's misdeeds and saw the perfect opportunity to punish him. You can smell that weed over the mac and cheese. <laughs> the mean old woman living down there whips her door open and knocks on the door to the stairs leading to Big Titty Goth Girlfriend's apartment with the force of a thousand Reagan era propaganda police. Yeah, winners don't use drugs. All the arcades in the 90s told me that, all right? That's basic. <laughs> Velveeta Beard opens the door and she proceeds to just scream at Velveeta Beard about his drug use 
and says, Velveeta Beard better watch himself, and she didn't want to see it or smell it again, or there would be consequences. Consequences will never be the same. I've contacted the cyber police. <laughs> consequences will never be the same. And you'll be reported to the cyber police. <laughs> People have yelled at me for using that meme before, but I'm going to continue using it. Is it sad? Yes. Is it hilarious? Also, yes. <laughs> oh. Velveeta Beard openly admitted to hating confrontation and avoided any kind of argument in any way that he could, so this old woman terrified him. Avoided arguments? Hated confrontation? Didn't we have an argument about a, a slave wife in the earlier part of this same story? <laughs> Is that different for some reason? He seems to be okay with arguing his point to, like, a poor barmaiden, right? Honestly, that old lady, invite her in! Offer her some mac and cheese so she don't have to eat rotten boiled vegetables, you know, smoke her out and shit like that. She'll chill down, no problem. <laughs> She's never gonna have a problem with it again. All you gotta do is, uh, extend the olive branch, or the weed bud, if you prefer. So yeah, Velveeta Beard sprinted back up the stairs to Big Titty Goth Girlfriend's bedroom a few minutes later with what I can only imagine as a power metal riff with the lyrics fuck 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 playing in his mind and tells us what happened. Velveeta Beard says, hey Guys, that fucking old woman smelled the weed. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Please don't call the police. OP. Sorry, man. <laughs> we should have smoked on the balcony. Uh, I, I didn't even think about it. Was she mad? Velveeta. <laughs> she said there would be consequences. Oh, no. If it isn't the consequences of my own actions. <laughs> OP. What kind of consequences? I'll go and apologize to her and tell her it won't happen again. Which it totally will. I'll go lie to that old lady is what you're saying right now. <laughs> Montessori teacher says, I can come and apologize too. We all smoked. Whoa. Velveeta, you can't talk to her. She'll call the cops. Montessori teacher, calm down. I don't think she's actually going to call the cops, man. OP. Why did she say she'd call the cops? Velveeta. I don't know. I just ran. <laughs> <laughs> the police, they are after me. Uh, you are just a, a scared, sad little man, are you not? Montessori teacher says, I'll just take the weed back to my house. So if the cops show up, there won't be any here. Everything's going to be fine, man. Whoa. Yeah, let him take the weed back to his house, right? And then they're like, hey, can I get that back? He's like, oh, yeah, I lost it. <laughs> uh, I don't know what happened to it, honestly. It was sitting right here. I smoked it all. <laughs> uh, Velveeta Beard. Hey, you don't understand. I need revenge. I hate that old woman. You, you're the one running away from her like a little boy. <laughs> like a true Viking would, right? Jesus Christ, what a weak human being. OP has some wise advice here and says, Don't escalate with this old woman. We'll just make sure that weed smoke isn't in the apartment again. Velveeta, I'll escalate all I want. I'm gonna find a way to fuck her up. How dare an old ass woman tell me if I can smoke weed or not? I don't know, bro. This is seeming like pretty confrontational to me. I thought he didn't like confrontation. <laughs> there are more than a couple holes in this story. What's going on? OP, just smoke it on the balcony from now on. Montessori teacher, you guys can always smoke at mine in the banker's house too. Whoa, we can get high and play some VR games. Oh yeah, you got fucking Beat Saber over there, bro? 
I'm down to play some Beat Saber for real. <laughs> the banker. Yeah, it's not a problem. If your neighbor doesn't like it, we live really close by. Velveeta. No, she needs to learn to respect me. If we were back in the Middle Ages, I would have just killed her for insulting me. Oh, God. <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? We don't have to be in the Middle Ages, okay? You can open up the door and, and just hit that old lady in the face with a brick. I think they would also prosecute you in the Middle Ages. You would be behind bars where you probably belong for your little sneaky finger play that was uh, sort of confirmed. The truth is this ego is so fragile that it doesn't belong in society. As a matter of fact, it doesn't belong in any time period. Peg it in, bro. Go stay in the corner. You're fucking done, son. <laughs> After this incident, Velveeta Beard was more cautious about smoking weed, but I guess this made him less cautious about the other creepy shit that he was doing, because I started to notice some strange behavior from Velveeta Beard. Oh yeah, that mask is coming off, isn't it? He would go through phases of being overly nice to Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and I that seemingly came out of nowhere. His go-to move would be to randomly give us each one of his precious snacks that only he was allowed to eat. That's overly nice to you? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, you guys want one of my snacky cakes? Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll have it, bro. I'm totally suspicious he offered me a snacky cake. <laughs> Why, bro? There's 12 in a box. You good? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Uh, in addition to all this, he would still have Festival Girl over and then complain that hey, she wouldn't date him after she left. <laughs> I love that. Still getting cucked by a dude in a completely different state. <laughs> uh, it got weird to the point that Festival Girl seemed kind of sad whenever she'd come over. Almost like she knew that it was happening. She probably did. She probably just don't care. When I would be hanging out with Big Titty Goth Girlfriend, Velveeta Beard would frequently stop in the hallway and creep up to the door to her room on the way back to his and try to sneakily listen to whatever we were doing. Yeah, that's when you interrupt the conversation and say, Fuck off, Velveeta Beard. <laughs> Call it out every time you see it. He'll stop. We thought it was some sort of weird joke that he was doing at the time and would yell at him to stop creeping and we would all kind of laugh and he would leave. Yeah, don't laugh at that. <laughs> Go punch him. That's what you gotta do. You really want to make it stop? He's not gonna understand. He's not smart enough to understand human language. Violence. That's what he understands. On top of that, he told us that he could hear us having sex because the bedrooms were right next to each other. <laughs> uh, I thought this was a complaint and we tried to be more quiet and mainly only hung out at my apartment. You'll see in the final story that that was not a complaint. Also, he never did anything to get revenge on the old woman. Oh, he just got high and talked a bunch of crap. Yeah, I guess I've been there before. <laughs> I didn't think much of it at the time, but my God, do I wish I took all this activity more seriously. Get ready for some horrible shit to go down in the next one. This will be the climax where Velveeta Beard reveals his true nature and is removed from our lives while simultaneously destroying his. Honestly, at this point, I'm, I'm kind of just waiting for the series to be over. I'm kind of waiting for the final decision on whether this was fake or real because, yeah, th there's holes in the story. He doesn't like confrontation except all the confrontation that he creates in this story. Then again, he didn't do anything to the old lady, I guess. And maybe he didn't realize that he was being confrontational to the barmaiden. But it just seems really weird to me. It does feel to me like OP is, is learning some stuff, you know? This story wasn't all about him getting drunk. I mean, there was the, the getting drunk part, but I didn't harp on it too much. Neither did OP. We are getting more of the beard now, which I am so delighted to hear about. Still a little bit of non sequiturs, you know, like the dog and stuff like that, but that doesn't bug me all that much, I guess.
OP is improving his craft, and I do thank him for sticking through writing these stories, being cool about it on Discord when I, I totally did dunk on him in the first one. But I'm seeing less and less reasons to dunk lately, so good on you, OP. I am proud of you. I am looking forward to, we'll probably do like the side stories, there's a couple of those, and then we'll get into uh, part six, which is another two-parter, probably another beefy one. And probably the closest a human could get to going Super Saiyan would be getting a out of rage. <laughs> Velveeta Beard 6, Part 1. Yeah, 6 1. Yeah, are you keeping up? We know what's going on here. <laughs> Lasers, degeneracy, and the end of a Velveeta based era. Lasers? Degeneracy. We've had degeneracy this whole time. The lasers? That's kind of shiny and new. I'm excited for the lasers, honestly. <laughs> the end of Velveeta based era, I knew that was coming too. So yes, just bring me the lasers. That's gonna be fine. This one had to be posted in two parts due to Reddit's character limit. I think that's mostly because of the Link Swarm that we have here. Episodes 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And welcome once again, my friends, to the terrible conclusion of the Velveeta Beard saga, as well as the conclusion of my friendship with Velveeta Beard, and also his life in the small college town that we lived in. I thought you were just gonna say the end of his life. I'm like, shit, Velveeta Beard dies at the end of this? <laughs> I didn't like him, but I think that's a little much. <laughs> He has shown some beardy behavior in the previous episodes, but this story goes from 0 to 100 real fucking quick. Prepare yourself, readers, for you are about to be drenched in liquid hot Velveeta-based cringe. Yeah, it's not as fun as it sounds. Honestly, they keep that cheese way too hot to keep it liquid. It's giving me like third degree burns. It's really hard to just wipe off. Melted cheese is dangerous. Melted Velveeta is like... It's essentially just melted plastic that tastes like cheese. <laughs> uh, edit! In the last story, I said that Velveeta Beard hated confrontation. I didn't word this correctly. Yeah, I pointed that out. <laughs> Velveeta Beard hated being confronted by someone else. He was perfectly fine if he was the aggressor. I don't know if him being the one starting the argument made him feel like not as afraid or if he thought it wasn't starting an argument when he would say things like, you know, a slave wife would be totally normal. But if he was the aggressor, he was fine. It still seems slightly weird to me, but I'm just gonna let it pass. I'm gonna say, okay, that's, that's fine if that's how this gentleman was. But if that's the case, why didn't he, like, whine back from the old lady and then, uh, become aggressive towards her later? Instead, he just wound it back totally, never did anything towards that old lady from the last episode. It's just really weird. I guess he's just a really weird guy. That's what we could chalk all that up to. <laughs> uh, we're about two years into me knowing Velveeta Beard, and I was hanging out with him, Soy Beard, and Big Titty Goth Girlfriend pretty frequently. As we begin our tale, let me paint you a picture of a relaxed summer evening. Oh, yes, romance is in the air. I'm about to get blown and I'm totally wasted because I'm party demon. Whoa! <laughs> uh, uh, got him. Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and I were walking downtown to the bar slash club place that I worked at. It had recently renovated its upstairs into a relaxed, lounge-styled bar, and some of my friends wanted to check it out and were waiting for us to get there. As we hang out and people begin to talk about leaving to get dinner, I get a call from Velveeta Beard, and that's OP's truest friend, honestly. <laughs> Uh, Velveeta Beard said, uh, that a new and exclusive club had just opened up, and we had to go tonight. This was the night he'd pick up a girl in a club, uh, because he would be the classiest guy there. Uh, yeah, that's totally how that works. <laughs> Women's scoping out the club, and they're just like, look at that guy. He's in a three-piece suit. I better go bang him. 
<laughs> no. I'm pretty sure you need to develop a personality first, Velveeta Beard. He don't know none of this. He's just gonna go don his finest fedora and be like, I don't know why women aren't talking to me. <laughs> Cause you fucking weird, bro. <laughs> As the evening progressed, we got something for dinner, and then decided to meet up with Velveeta Beard to check out this club. We'd come back to Big Titty Goth Girlfriend's apartment, and there's Velveeta Beard, his face bulging with impatient fluids. Impatient fluids? What? <laughs> Can somebody translate that for me? Blood? He had a big, flushed, bulgy, bloody face? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> he was wearing the red slash black anime vampire suit that he wore to the prom themed party, despite it being 90 degrees out. Yeah, <laughs> he's going to get real sweaty. That's what gets the ladies wet, like quite literally, because <laughs> you're sweating all over them like a gross fucking pig. <laughs> Uh, this was around the time that swag is for boys, class is for men memes were going around, so I think uh, this was the logic that Velveeta Beard was going with. Swag is for boys, class is for men. That's like man cave is for boys, the study is for men. There was like this whole phase on the internet. Somehow I think that that entire movement shifted into like the Roman statues that you see on Twitter. Like, if your parents told you to go outside, touch some grass, stop being a weirdo, you're like, fuck you, mom and dad! But if a random Roman statue on Twitter tells you to do it, you're like, yeah! That's a great idea, you you've changed my life! <laughs> uh, uh, duh! By wearing a suit, he would outclass all the other guys at the club and definitely pick up a m'lady. Soybeard was there as well, surprisingly enjoying the power metal that Velveeta Beard had put on. Velveeta was in a huge rush to leave. He wanted to begin his wooing as quickly as possible, and we all speed walked down to the club. Yeah, speed walk in a suit in 90 degree weather. I want to get to the club super sweaty. <laughs> Uh, this is awful. A suit is not a substitute for a personality, okay? Please, Velveeta Beard. <laughs> He's gonna go in there with, with his suit and talk about slave wives, and everybody's just gonna be like, ah, uh, I gotta go. <laughs> and then you got the dance floor all to yourself. Congratulations. Drinks are still $20. This club had everything that you could dream of in a nightclub. A huge line outside, Maybe like 30 people actually inside, a $20 cover charge, and $15 vodka sodas. This already sounds like the worst time ever. You, you think I'm gonna pay 20 bucks to go into that fucking building and listen to music that's too loud in a room that's too dark? Eat, eat a dick. <laughs> I can't do it. Maybe when I was younger, but even then, like 20 bucks, bro. Forget about it. Forget about it. We arrive finally get in and saw what small town people like us had been missing in terms of clubs. There were about 10 people dancing, <laughs> a DJ and lasers going everywhere. The entire budget of this place seemed to go into lasers and there were literally hundreds zooming all over the place. Yeah, for the 10 people that are on the dance floor. This is, this is sad, honestly. <laughs> Uh, you have painted a scene? Maybe it's supposed to sound like fun, but all it does is fucking depress me. I hate that. You paid $20 to get in here! <laughs> There's nobody in here! Ugh! Velveeta Beard was aggressively wiggling around the dance floor, talking at the m'ladies as he normally did. I can only describe his dancing style as like aggressive hip wiggling in every direction. Yeah, a little bit of that Pee Wee Herman dance. <laughs> uh, that's the dance that gets all the ladies, honestly. His arms barely moved, but uh, his hips didn't lie. 
<laughs> and they were saying, eh, I raped an unconscious girl. Oh my god. <laughs> that joke is really dark. Um, ooh, <laughs> that hurts. Uh, I don't know how to feel about that. I mean, I guess it did happen, but do we have to bring it up again? <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, okay. I couldn't tell what he was saying at these girls on the dance floor because the music was too loud, but soon Velveeta Beard returned to tell us of his wooing. <laughs> God damn, dude. <laughs> uh, I'm still stuck on that just like non sequitur line completely dropped in. I often say party demon whoa, but this time I mean like party demon whoa. Slow up, bro. <laughs> uh, just just dial it back five or ten notches, okay? <laughs> Velveeta says, Guys, do you think I could get any of these girls? I feel like I'm going to pick one of them up tonight because uh, I wore a suit. No one else here is dressed as classy as me. Yeah, that's what really counts when you go to the club. Honestly, that's why I carry a cane and a top hat everywhere I go. <laughs> uh, Party Demon says, I don't know. Just don't do anything weird. Velvet a Beard, I'm not doing anything weird. I'm dancing with them. Why aren't they into it? Probably because you're not a great dancer. And if dancing's not your strong suit, then maybe conversation is. And if conversation is... Maybe he shouldn't be in a club at all. Why did he want to come to the club? I don't understand. <laughs> uh, this is terrible. On so many levels. OP says, Sometimes people just aren't into it. Uh, I don't know. Come on, give him some advice. You're the party demon, bro. <laughs> Velveeta says, I, I tried talking to them, and they don't say anything, and they just keep dancing. <laughs> OP, it's a dance club. Chill out. <laughs> no shit. Why did you come to a club to talk to people? You want to go to like a dive bar. That's really what you want if you're looking for some conversation. And really probably the chicks that you find at a dive bar aren't necessarily the type that you want to take home to mom either. <laughs> but at least you would stand a better chance. I mean if you had a personality. Velveeta Beard for some reason just thinks like, put on a suit and everything's different now. Well, let me tell you this, you could put a hat on a pile of dog shit, but it's still a pile of dog shit, okay? <laughs> Write that one down. Soybeard says, oh, this place will be better if they play cool music. Yes, yes, we know. Uh, objectively, your subjective music taste is better than everybody else's. Please give it a fucking rest, Velveeta. Yeah, uh, we should go somewhere else where the girls will actually be into me. The moon? <laughs> where is that mystical, magical place, Velveeta Beard? You tell me. <laughs> Uh, I don't think there is a place like that. I'm nice. Even Festival Girl's into me. Even though she's always trying to get back with the racks. <laughs> and that's still the funniest thing in the world to me. Honestly, somewhere where the girls will be into me. Okay, go to the strip club with a big fat stack of singles and have the time of your life, all right? Just play pretend for one night, like, yeah, these girls are really into me. <laughs> and then once all the singles are gone and, and they leave you alone and destitute, then you really start to think about your life and be like, oh, God damn it. It was fun while it lasted, at least. Nice is, like, not a substitute for having a personality. You, you need to do better than this, Velveeta Beard. I hope he realizes that at some point. Ugh, Big Titty Goth Girlfriend says, Do you even like her? You always talk shit about Festival Girl when she leaves, Velveeta. I hate that she's into her ex when she should be with me. Uh... <laughs> Party Demon, you gotta get over this weird deal with her, man. She's not into it the way that you are. Objectively, yeah, yeah, that's pretty true. That's true. 
<laughs> yeah, that's pretty true. That's true, and yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's pretty true. Velveeta says, "She is into me, though. I I just need to convince her." That's not how things like this work at all. But good luck. Live your best life. I can't do any of this shit for you. <laughs> Eventually, we leave the club, and while we were deciding where to go, Soybeard noticed a few people standing by some bushes and smoking. Soybeard, for some reason, wanted to talk to these people, and our beardly ensemble followed him over to them. You just left the club? You spent 20 bucks to get in there! And you're just like, eh, it ain't that good. <laughs> uh, let's go hang out with those people that are smoking by some bushes. This is weird. This is real weird, bro. It was then that Velveeta Beard says a line that I will forever remember. You guys, probably the closest a human could get to going Super Saiyan would be getting a boner out of rage. <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe. What? <laughs> Soybeard nods in agreement, and I just sort of stand there thinking, why did you suddenly want to say that to a bunch of strangers? This was the legitimately weirdest conversation that I have ever heard, so buckle up. Honestly, it seems kind of like Ramtide's icebreaker. Do you waffle stomp or do you log toss it into the toilet? <laughs> He's just, like, trying to open it up with going Super Saiyan and having a rage boner. It's not all that different. Like, I do kind of see where Velveeta Beard is coming from with this. Honestly, not a bad icebreaker. <laughs> I might lift that one for just a little bit later. It 100% will start a conversation. I don't know if it's what you want it to be about. I guess my return line to that would be like, <laughs> You know Majin Buu? Isn't that thing just like a living, massive, angry priapism? <laughs> Isn't he? <laughs> uh, uh, Velveeta Beard says, No, guys, but like, think about it. What if a human got so angry that they got a boner? I mean, fear boners are a thing. Why not anger boners? <laughs> Uh, it's, it is funny. I kind of like this conversation. It's weird, yes, but I'm going to give him a pass. I can't talk any any shit about this because Ramtide, we've all heard his line before, right? <laughs> so this is this is essentially the same thing. Party Demon says, I, I don't think that could happen, Velveeta Beard. It's totally possible, dude. Like, you'd have to be really bad, though. <laughs> oh, P. Uh, Velveeta. And scream like a Dragon Ball Z. And it would just pop up. Like, ah, pop. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's how that works. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Uh, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm gonna try it right now. Stand back, everybody. <laughs> I don't want to put an eye out. <laughs> Soybeard says, I wonder if it would be possible, though. Velveeta, it, it definitely would. I'm gonna try it. OP, could you not try it in front of us? <laughs> Velveeta, no, dude. I'd have to be naked. I, I'm going to do it in my room. <laughs> uh, he has taken this just uh, the slightest bit too far. It's still an interesting conversation piece as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> the group of other people that Soybeard came over to talk to just leave at this point. <laughs> Sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> uh, gotta go. Velveeta, imagine what it would be like to hook up with a girl using a rage boner. Like, what if she was there and I was just like, ah, and I got one. <laughs> I mean, hate fucking is a thing. Your boner is hooked into your circulatory system. I'm sure it's possible. 
I am 100% sure it's possible. It does, like I said, it's an interesting conversation piece. I don't have to like Velveeta Beard as a person, but as weird as this conversation is, like, I I'm kind of willing to go down the road. <laughs> Uh, but I know most people wouldn't be. They would, like normal people, would probably just be like, you're a weird dude. But I am a weird dude, and I am willing to, to hash this out. Big Titty Goth Girlfriend says, who would be into that? <laughs> Velveeta. A lot of girls, probably. I'm gonna try it. I I'm gonna learn to do it. <laughs> uh... Big Titty Goth Girlfriend says, Why would you be angry if there was the girl that wanted to have sex with you, Velveeta? No, it would be like anime anger. And she would be into it. <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't think that's necessarily the case. Even if her panties were already off, she's gonna run into the night with just a shirt on, looking like some sexy Winnie the Pooh or something like that. <laughs> uh, no, probably not sexy Winnie the Pooh. If she was hooking up with Velveeta Beard, it's probably bottom of the barrel, but... <laughs> regardless, she's, she's not gonna be into that. Nobody's gonna be into that. She's gonna be scared. <laughs> Everybody's gonna be scared if you pull your pants off and just start screaming your boner to life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Big Diddy Goth Girlfriend says, Girls in real life aren't anime girls, Velveeta Beard. Velveeta. Uh, I've met ones like anime girls. <laughs> uh, oh yeah? What happened? <laughs> Those 2D girls didn't want to come out to the club with you, huh? Had to stick with these 3D PD chicks, huh? <laughs> My heart goes out to you. <laughs> Big Titty Goth Girlfriend says, What girls, Velveeta? Uh, I don't know. Just like... Uh, girls? <laughs> oh. <laughs> of course. I'm buying it now. He's really got me hooked in. <laughs> Big Titty Goth Girlfriend says, Shut up, Velveeta Beard. No, you haven't. And that is how we ended the night. We all went back to Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and Velveeta Beard's apartment, and Velveeta Beard brought up the Rage Boner discussion again before we all went to sleep. Continued in part two. And as an interim, let me just say that you've done a wonderful thing here, OP. We're focusing way more on the beards. There was no more of like how many vodka sodas you drank or anything like that. This is the Velveeta beard that I wanted from the beginning. Focusing on the beard and all his really weird idiosyncrasies. The rage boner thing, honestly, it's not that bad. <laughs> I would go down the road. I would have that conversation. I kind of want to have it right now with the Twitch chat. But we'll have to save it for another day, another video. <laughs> when you see the rage boner thumbnail, regardless of if, of if it's demonetized or not, I just got to make it. <laughs> uh, anyways, let's jump into part two right now. Velveeta Beard 6, part number two. This is the final part of Velveeta Beard. I hope that things blow up in a really big way, because the other part seemed like, you know, interesting, but nothing truly happened. Is it all leading to something? I surely hope so. Lasers! Degeneracy and the end! of a Velveeta-based era. This time for realsy reels, probably. I don't know. Trigger warning, voyeurism, previous episodes, there they are. Continued from part one. Oh, voyeurism. Yes, I suppose I wouldn't put that past Velveeta Beard. He's gonna sneak a peek at, at Big Titty Goth Girlfriend. Really, this all could have been condensed into probably like one one-off series. Uh, let's see how it goes though. The morning after I awoke in a daze, snuggling big titty goth girlfriend. W was your face in the in the in the titties, or did you like rest them on your shoulders? I love being the little spoon, honestly. Even if my wife is smaller than me, I just wear her like a jetpack. I'm like, let's go to Pleasure Town, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm gonna help myself. I just kind of slipped out, and uh, Elijah's gonna leave it in, right? 
Oh, hell yeah, brother. Yeet, yeet. I specifically remember the night before, Velveeta Beard saying, the closest a human could probably get to going Super Saiyan would be getting a boner out of rage. Which, as we discussed, is probably pretty accurate. And draws many parallels to Ramtide's log tossing versus waffle stomping argument. Ramtide also just entered the Twitch chat. That's super cool. We are st live streaming this whole thing on Twitch, if you didn't know. So the snuggling with Big Titty Goth Girlfriend eventually led to sex. Oh my god, bro. You had sex with your girlfriend? High five. Bam! I had sex with my wife yesterday. High five. Bam! Oh, it's pretty much like uh, <laughs> a given that you guys are going to do stuff like this. I don't mean to dunk on OP too hard, because... It is part of the story. This is what leads to the voyeurism, right? So it was uh, it was pretty quiet, and I really didn't think that anyone, let alone a hungover Velveeta beard, could hear us. <laughs> uh, oh boy. This is gonna get really gross, right? I hope he's not like cranking his hog in the hall or something. Hopefully he's just listening. <laughs> but then how would OP know about it? I guess let's find out. <laughs> Continue on. Now, readers, I need to explain the way that the doors were in this weird old apartment building that Big Titty Goth Girlfriend lived in. Above the doors, there were small glass windows that you could tilt open. I think that they were there historically to let air throughout the house on hot days, and the town we lived in was pretty old, so a lot of the houses were built in, like, the 1700s. So those weird little door windows were pretty standard in a lot of apartments. 1700s? <laughs> made of fucking thatch? <laughs> uh, I have made my home from thatch and horse dung. Yes, that's why the rent is so cheap. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's... Could that be accurate? 1700 seems pretty crazy to me. If you're talking 1795, then we might as well call it the, the, the 1800s at that point, right? It seems unfeasible to me, mostly because I'm from the West Coast, but... Uh, yeah, it is possible on the East Coast, I do suppose. <laughs> Probably not super likely, but, but possible. I'll allow it. It was during sex that I began to look at this weird window. I'm not sure why, but it's where my eyes were drawn. Oh, you were getting a ride from her and stuff like that? Yeah! I love being the one on the bottom, just enjoy the show and shit like that. And then all of a sudden you look up at the window and what do he see? A few seconds of looking and I see something moving. Sort of like a dark triangle. Then I realize what it was. I stop and whisper to Big Titty Goth Girlfriend, Is that... Is that a fucking cell phone? It was. And guess what Velveeta Encrusted Fuck! was on his tiptoes holding it so just the camera corner was peeking in through the window. Readers, I thought I had gone Super Saiyan. And not just because you had a boner at that moment, right? <laughs> uh, before I could do anything, Big Titty Goth Girlfriend shot out of bed, put on a robe, and yelled, Velveeta Beard, what the fuck? Oh my god, he's out there cranking his macaroni! <laughs> Uh, somebody get him! Oh, this is, this is not good. I hope you beat the shit out of him. I hope that's how this ends. The beard ran like goats on fire, sprinting down the hallway to his nest and hiding in his bed. You can probably hear him running down the hall. Bum, 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 bum! <laughs> uh, yeah, he's super fucking sneaky, right? His feeble, unlocked door could not hold back Big Titty Goth Girlfriend. She kicked it open and began to yell at Velveeta Beard. Words are not enough at this point. At this point, I think we need some physical harm to really send the message home. Do you have a belt? Something like that? <laughs> Just start hitting him with it, with the buckle side. <laughs> After brushing off Velveeta's creepiness for two years, thinking he was trying to get better and reform his beardy ways, we only came to find out that he didn't care about anything but creeping on girls. And I was not in the mood to deal with this shit anymore. Yes, kill him, OP. Put him against the wall. <laughs> Being in a sort of weird state of shock, I walked into the room somewhat calmly. He raised his head to look at me while sitting on his bed. 
And I went in for an uppercut, but ended up actually punching him in the throat. Oh, that's perfect. Collapse his fucking throat and watch him choke to death due to his own broken hyoid bone. <laughs> that's what I want to see. This is what you deserve, peeping Tom. But I guess if you, like, outright killed him, then he wouldn't be able to learn a lesson if he's capable of that. I'm, I'm still not quite sure. Now, if you've ever gotten punched in the throat, yeah, it's a really bad time. <laughs> uh, I don't make a habit of it, but yeah, I can imagine this as such. Uh, Velveeta Beard was wheezing and struggling to breathe, feeling nothing but a black abyss of betrayal and hate. I continued to beat the Velveeta out of him while he squirmed around his crusty sheets, trying to use them to block the punches. <laughs> uh, I mean, honestly, I could see this. You were friends at one point, and here he is creeping on your girlfriend. He deserves much worse. I don't mean death, but I do mean more than punches. Maybe like a, a sawed-off baseball bat, <laughs> or, uh, you know, some beanbag shotgun <laughs> rounds, or... I don't know. <laughs> I just want to see him hurt real bad. I don't know why he didn't try to fight back. Maybe he felt that he had deserved it for what he had done. I was actually debating including this part in the story as I'm a pretty paranoid person, but I've kept things anonymous enough that none of us are really identifiable. I can think of two reasons that he didn't fight back. One, yes, he knows that he deserved it. He considers you a friend. And two, yeah, he's just bitch made. <laughs> Can't even defend himself. He's just like, I don't know, I guess I'll lay here. It'll be over pretty soon. It'll be over when I say it's fucking over. It'll be over after the cattle prod. After the car battery gets attached to your nuts. <laughs> uh, Velveeta Beard definitely had hell to pay and knew that his life was about to explode into thousands of shattered Velveeta bites. All because you couldn't keep your little macaroni noodle put away. For shame, for shame. <laughs> I forget what the conversation exactly was due to the, you know, intense rage and, and punching and the shock of it happening, but a lot of it was me yelling, What the fuck? You are my friend! What's wrong with you? Right away, Velveeta Beard started getting magic flute voice. He sounded like a baby bat that was even more terrified than usual. He was wheezing and apologizing with the same problems and I can't control myself lines that he used when he assaulted that unconscious girl a few years ago. I mean, who didn't see this come? There were red flags right there. Come on, man. Didn't see the red flags? Too busy being party demon? Is that what that was? I don't believe for a single second that he reformed because he's too busy being focused on, on women. Impressing women. Talking about having a slave wife and all this shit. Nah, man. <laughs> None of this is gonna fly as far as I'm concerned. We asked him how long this had been going on. His answer was, uh, Around the time when you guys started dating. Yeah. For years, he's probably got terabytes of big titty goth girlfriend porn on his phone. The beard and the videos needed to go, and we would make sure that they did. First, we made Velveeta Beard go through his phone and computer in front of us and delete any videos that he had saved. I mean, how deep can you scrub on the computer, honestly? There's a lot of hidden files and folders and whatnots. Probably Velveeta Beard wasn't uh, all that smart. But the only way to fix this is to like wipe his fucking hard drive. <laughs> Call the cops, make sure they show up and, and submit this to evidence. How about that? This is not something that you should be dealing with yourself. This is a case of voyeurism that, that he needs to get some help. And I'm not 100% sure that putting him through the court system would help him, uh, but it would definitely make him think about what he's done. Like, did he save any any of this to the cloud? <laughs> you can't really scrub it from the cloud, can ya? <laughs> Jesus. 
He also deleted his massive porn collection in an effort to show that he was going to uh, change and uh, control his urges. Uh, porn is poison, bro. I, I don't know. Some people out there do watch it and enjoy it, but fuck. I have seen far too many coom-brained boys to, to really get behind and be like, that's a great thing. <laughs> that is something you should consume. I mean, if you choose to, that's on you, you know, but personally, yeah, I ain't gonna touch that. Poison, bro. It was tens of gigabytes worth of porn. Oh, tens ain't even that bad. When I was at my worst, never mind. <laughs> I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> I was surprised that there was anything on his computer besides porn after the amount that he had deleted. We also took the phone and computer from him and just deleted pretty much everything else on them in case he had the videos hidden somewhere. Like the cloud! <laughs> You're not scrubbing it. All he has to do is log in again from somewhere else. Oh, God. Oh, God! It makes me so uncomfortable. There were surprisingly few of them that we found. See? See? He said that he always deletes the videos after jerking off to him because he felt guilty. Honestly, I'm sure the guilt is like part of the rush. And if that's the case, I highly doubt that he got rid of them. I'm going to just keep screaming, check the cloud until the end of the video. But yes, please do that. <laughs> Second, we made him move out of the apartment on that day into his car. After you jacked his phone and computer and all that shit. <laughs> uh, oh, that's funny. <laughs> Give me all your stuff and maybe you can stay. Actually, no, you can't. Get the hell out. <laughs> uh, I don't know how he fit all of those unopened Gundam models and the desktop computer into his car. But he did. And then how did you cleanse the room after he left? You, you set it on fire, right? That's the only thing that's really going to scrub it clean. <laughs> it was in this car life phase that he texted Big Titty Goth Girlfriend again to apologize. In these text messages, he admitted to what he had done. She took screenshots and sent them to me. I really wish I still had them, but this was years ago. Velveeta Beard was terrified of going to prison. He would talk about it on occasion, so with screenshots of his own confession, we could force this beard out of our lives permanently. Uh, I guess. He's gonna go on to victimize other people. He's not getting better. He, like, lost this battle, but he still hasn't received the help that he needs. Honestly, call the cops, bro. But OP does address it, okay? Why didn't we just call the police when all of this went down? Well, we had a lot of weed around the apartment because Big Titty Goth Girlfriend was still selling weed at that point in our lives, and neither Big Titty Goth Girlfriend nor I trusted the police in our area. Because you're doing illegal things? <laughs> yeah, that's the best part about victimizing criminals, right? They have no fucking recourse. Jesus, this is a mess. Ah! Just please, do your best to live within the confines of the law. <laughs> okay, sometimes it's not easy. I've broken the law quite a few times, but you don't want to live your entire life outside of it. That's just, that's just a bad look. And I'm sure that you could hand the weed off to somebody else and then call the police. That would be a fine option as well. Isn't that what happened when the old lady called the police or something like that? I mean, you give me all the weed that you got to sell. I'll gladly hold on to it. I don't promise that you'll ever get any of it back, but... <laughs> <laughs> we'll hold on to it for a good long time. In my lungs. <laughs> We've seen the police do a lot of shitty things to people, and we didn't want this turning into everyone getting arrested because the cop was having a bad day. Well, I don't buy that in the least, but okay. <laughs> I, I, I suppose let's go ahead and let ourselves get victimized because of what might happen. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird, bro. I regret not taking that route now. Velveeta Beard should have gone to prison many a time before this. I mean, you do win some points back for that, OP. After witnessing what Velveeta Beard did, 
I'm 100% on Team OP. These last few posts have been completely on point. This is what I like from Neckbeard Stories. I'm sorry I went after you so hard in the first few posts. That's what I want to say. Maybe I was having a bad day. Maybe that is my problem. You know, you, you didn't deserve the harsh treatment that you got. It was a rough month, and um, I'm glad that we pushed through because, yes, although we didn't get uh, a huge kaboom, no true catharsis, at least Velveeta Beard was pushed out. Fingers crossed that he learned a fucking lesson, although I don't know if that's the case. We wanted to prevent Velveeta from convincing anyone else that he was trying to change and he couldn't help himself and he had problems. So we told everyone that we knew in this small town who knew the beard what he had done. The town was small enough that eventually most people who knew Velveeta Beard knew that he was caught secretly filming his friends having sex. I mean, he just moves to the next town over. It's not that much of a repercussion, but I guess it's better than nothing. If anyone wanted proof, we had the texts in which he admitted to doing it. The hate for Velveeta Beard, which was apparently simmering just under the surface of our small town, emerged like a raging fountain of boiling nacho cheese. Velveeta Beard was essentially run out of town on a rail. People were pretty quick to hate him. Apparently Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and Pie Girl weren't the only girls that he had been creeping on, just the only ones that I knew about. He was unwelcome almost anywhere in our small town, and a few of our friends that Velveeta Beard didn't know were actively looking for him to try and jump him and do more than I did because of their anonymity to Velveeta Beard. That's fair, honestly. I, I don't generally condone involving yourself in other people's affairs. Sounds like a group of people that are just, like, looking for a reason to kick the shit out of somebody, which, uh... I don't know. Velveeta Beard does deserve it, but it also seems pretty shitty from those people, like, stay in your fucking lane type of stuff. I'm a bit conflicted on that, but I guess they never found him. <laughs> Velveeta Beard had to move a state away to live with his parents, quit his job at the sandwich shop, and we used his text confession to force him to pay the remainder of his rent for the lease to Big Titty Goth Girlfriend. God damn. <laughs> I bet he was selling all his gunpla figurines, right? There's a lot of money in those fucking things, I'm pretty sure. The life and relationships that he had built for eight years were destroyed in just a few days. All because I looked through a weird window over a door during sex. What a weird fuck. I'm, I'm glad his life blew up, honestly. <laughs> he does deserve it. I hope he learned some things, but I'm just... Not completely convinced that he did. I think he just goes on to victimize somebody else, and that's how, how this story goes. We'll hear from Velveeta Beard again under a different name. I'm gonna put some money on that. And now we are into our epilogue. After this whole thing went down, Big Titty Goth Girlfriend got a text from Festival Girl asking to meet up to explain some things. She said that Velveeta Beard wanted to apologize. Not in person, of course, and that it was only ever about Big Titty Goth Girlfriend. He apparently didn't give a shit about me, despite us being friends for two years. It was solely about the lady. It always is. <laughs> in the last story, I said that Velveeta Beard would, at times, give Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and I a snack, randomly, from his coveted snack stash that was only for him. Festival Girl told us that it was actually after each time of secretly filming us. Some sort of weird covert apology or something like that. Hey, hey I, I filmed you guys having sex, but, but here's a cosmic brownie. <laughs> uh, so weird, dude. Yeah, he's a weird guy. Remember when Velveeta Beard would always say that Festival Girl didn't want to date him because she was in love with her abusive ex? Lol. No. It was because she knew that he was secretly in love with Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and wouldn't commit to him because of that. I don't even know if there ever was an abusive ex-boyfriend in the South that she would go and visit. 
She said she thought we all knew of Velveeta Beard's unrequited love, and that's why she never told us, but she didn't know about the secret filming. Okay, good for her, because if you did know about that and didn't say anything, you're a total piece of shit. <laughs> but good, good. I'm glad you didn't know. Soybeard decided that he wanted to stay friends with both Big Titty God Girlfriend and I, as well as Velveeta Beard. <laughs> we were not so cool with the fact that he chose Velveeta Beard, and he now lives in a different state than all of us. I think he's still listening to Math Rock and thinking that he's the coolest person in the room. Yeah, as hipsters are wont to do. I do think it's rather immature of OP to be like, you have to pick one of us. <laughs> you can pick our friend group or his, but you can't do both. He's like, well, whatever. <laughs> How about I choose none? And he moved to uh, a completely different state. I still don't see how Soybeard is really a beard. Uh, he seemed like a pretty cool dude to me. Rather laid back and such. Velveeta Beard went on to try and date a 19 year old and he was 29 at the time. Oh God. <laughs> the relationship did not last mainly because Big Titty Goth Girlfriend told the girl what he did to save her from him. Again, I don't really know if that's her place. I mean, he is disgusting, but to continue, like, stalking the people that he dates and, like, bringing his past up again and again, like, how is he supposed to improve himself? How is he supposed to move on from this? I don't know. Again, I'm really conflicted. Velveeta Beard's definitely a piece of shit, but at a certain point, let it drop. You know what I mean? You decided not to call the cops? Okay, that was your choice. Now you have to live with that. You don't get to follow him around forever trying to play the police. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I got some mixed up feelings about that. The age gap thing also is really weird, but... I don't know, man. <laughs> this whole fucking thing was pretty weird. Uh, Velveeta Beard also attended some sort of sex addicts course or, or group. I'm not sure what it was, as I only heard about it through some people, but I do hope that it helped him to stop being so creepy. I really don't think that it did, though. I don't know if he still has a ring of Velveeta and spit crusted around his mouth, but I think that he probably does. Wasn't he on that Vice documentary, too, that was like, I'm addicted to macaroni and cheese and it's all I eat or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> I can't confirm any of that, but he does match the description of Velveeta Beard. That's pretty weird. Hmm, that's suspicious. <laughs> Eventually, I stopped being such an edgy degenerate and blacking out on Tuesday mornings. Teaching myself to code went well, and after years of work, I'm now a software engineer. Oh, bless up, OP. Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and I moved out of the college town that we lived in, and mainly just chill out with our dog and have a few beers on the weekend, instead of the constant drinking and drugs that I was doing throughout these stories. I still feel that I should have done more to fuck up Velveeta Beard for everything that he did. You are right, honestly. <laughs> Maybe it's good that you were keeping track of him and saving his current girlfriends, but I don't know. I mostly do agree with OP at the end of the story. He reaped a lot of what he sowed, okay? But there's a smaller part of me that questions how he is supposed to get better if his past keeps getting, you know, shoved in his face. I don't know. It's a difficult situation, and I can't tell OP how to live. I can only really give my view on it, and even then, it's, it's through the filter of, like, a few Reddit posts, so... I can't say 100% what you should do. This is just one guy on the internet giving an opinion. Uh, so everyone, that wraps up the tale of Velveeta Beard, the voyeuristic rapist Velveeta-encrusted power metal beard that I was friends with for two years. There are some other somewhat beardy people that I knew in that town, but none of them compared to Velveeta Beard in terms of creepiness and, you know, what he did. If you take anything from this tale, I hope that it's don't become a party demon, whoa! <laughs> Regardless of how depressed you are. And that assaulting beards that do what Velveeta Beard will never get better. Don't be friends with them, even if they say that they're trying to get better. Maybe you are right, bro. They get like this weird feeling of secret power and 
they just throw self-improvement out the window. Honestly, this story, it, it did start out terribly, okay? Go back, read part one. It still gets my blood boiling just a little bit. But OP was so fucking cool with it. He rolled with the punches. He edited the post, improved his writing, made it more focused. And that is really what I like to see. Yes, I'm an asshole sometimes out here dunking on OP for whatever. Some people feel like it's no reason. In the moment, it feels like a reason to me. But this is 100% the OP that I like to see. He's like, okay, I take your criticism on board. Let's make the next parts better for you. And that's amazing. So, uh, frat goth, I can't call you party demon anymore because now party demon is just part of the, the Red X mythology. <laughs> but user frat goth, I apologize for coming at you in the beginning. You are a very cool person. And not because of the drinking or the drugs, but because you were able to take criticism on board and improve your stories. Y you didn't throw a fucking fit at me, which OPs generally don't. Although I have seen an OP or two completely pull down every story that they made because of the, the take that I had. So I was hoping not to see that from you, and I didn't. And yeah, I thank you quite heartily for that. I hope that you guys enjoyed this series. If you did, I hope that you like, comment, and or subscribe. Maybe share it around. Check out them links in the description. Plugs, playlist, podcast, you know, Spotify, iTunes, it's whatever. <laughs> we also got my social medias, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, Twitch, where we live stream this whole thing. I'd also like to thank my channel members and my patrons, Jerry, Jerry, much, as I do every episode. So, uh, thank you. Dusty Targoni Jerry, Assassin Punk Jerry, Bang Bang, Aurora Wildheart, Baby Jerry, Bearded Jerry, Benji and the Jets, Bitch Gremlin, Blitzen Jerry, Browns Kraken, Catholic Jerry, Commander J Tank, Dennis Dayton, Dr. Larks, Aaron Aaron, Ace Bars, Frozen Army Studios, Firedrake, Get to at the Doodles, Shameless Blood, Commissions Open, <laughs> Adrian BR, I'm Slim Jerry, I'm the real Jerry, all you want the Slim Jerry, such as Sam Attaining, Inquisitor Jerry, Irish Pirate Jerry, Got the Stowaway Jerry, and now to see if he chooses a plank or a press gang. All Jerry's will join the Jerry Gang. <laughs> Iron Allo, Already in the Jam, JM Coon, Jerry Blacktail, Jerry Dallow, Mother Trucker, Hong Kong, John Hero, John Jerry, Jingle Hammer Schmidt, Crew He, Cutley Dragon, Legit Maker, Miss Monday, Logerio, Luca, was a clever Patreon name. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, like and subscribe, the Lady Nix, the last Jerry Bender. I have anxiety. <laughs> Malama Man. Marvel. Just Marvel. <laughs> Melgar of the Story, Metal Fifth, Needless King, Paragon Soul, Phantom of Pies, Princess Jerry Kinsey, Jerry Beth, Queen's Quailers, Quack Myers, Rampant Lacrimage, Rose Jerry Miller, Sarita the Lolita, Sassy Octopus, Saw, Scarlet's Kevin, Sergeant Gay Cop, Bruno of the Law, Silo Whip, Stephanie Gunner, Sign Down to Poopsie, Grill Tomago, Tabby, Blue Potato Fair, The Gypsy Barber, The Italian Greyhound Dino, The Little Sue, Oh, the one you fussy, Trying to find another ball, but get back to the real world. Uh, you probably don't want to blow into that balloon knot. <laughs> it's a stinky balloon. Victory Prime, Vanguard Angel, Viking Jerry, Wiki Tax, Stephanie Gargoyle or Clay, Comet and Mooney, Kira, not another Jerry, but he is no Red Wind, Nogamiper, Safe Listening, Venom Jerry, Wasabi Jerry, Jay Christensen, One Light Jerry, The Neck Beat Hunter, A Normal Jerry, Holds up a giant bag of popcorn, Brought my own snacks, and I'll share. <laughs> Give me some of that. Emerald Tea Tank, Emerald Alder, Atomic Jerry, Zelda Breaker of the Tall Army, Bartender Kirli, A Blueberry and Apple Pie, Broken Spine Horseradish, California Jerry Girl, Shepard Seven Lock, Chicago Pan, The Cody Light Year, Buzz's Less Interesting Cousin in Accounting, Cory Desart, Sometimes, <laughs> Cryptidies, The Fog Jerry, Death to Tuna, Dopamine, Dane, Jerry, Storby Dude, Ghost of Alba, He Cannot, Inside You Are Two Wolves, One Is Cringe, The Other Is Cringe, You Are Cringe, <laughs> Jerry, Jerry's Roaming the Streets of Finland, Hunting Down the Riddle Headband, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Geralt of Rivia, Jerry and Tom versus Happy New Year, Will Be Apocalypse, Jerry Springer, The Results Are In, You Are Not the Neckbeard, Jerry the Sussy Baca, Jerry's Mom's Got It Going On, Jerry Old Rivera, Jerry Rochester's King Tales, Kid Marvelous, Lucia Lovecraft, Machia CD, Mimi Next Time, Milford the cheat the tabletop to hear the elations of your waifus. <laughs> oh no! Uh, it's gone terribly wrong. <laughs> Spooky the rogue. Spooky scary Jerry Ton. Techno dubs. The original Jerry. He's not. There are two wolves inside me. Spit roasted Jerry. Oh god. <laughs> Doing finna Jerry and beyond. On Kale. Throws two leader Mountain Dew. Grow my neck, beer. Grow. It's Jerry time. Hold Red X Morpher. Hygiene. It's Jerry time. Hold Red X Morpher. Humility. And thank you to my $1 patrons as well. Channel members. Yes. We got Train Boy. Look at the loser. Or Game Steve. Malama Man. Scott the May Amara. The Gypsy Barber. Fire Drake. Samantha. Death's flagship. Bearded Snake. And buy two, get one hand. Bless up to the Jerry's and the not Jerry's alike. Uh, you guys just doing the most out here for the channel, and I cannot thank you enough. If you'd like to help out, that's absolutely huge. If you can't afford to do it right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like, oh, uh, watching some more Red X videos, huh? Huh? <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one, and until then... Uh, bye bye.